Do you know which picture you're going to use? Yeah. Uh, let me see. I'll, let me put it up here. I think I'm going to use this one. Can you describe it? Oh, let, let me just screen share it with you real quick okay. here. Yeah. Great. That one? Okay. Yeah, that's the one oh, I, I got. Perfect. That's, that's the one I got. Yeah. There's a, there's a couple of them that are pretty close. So <laughs> this one, or, you know, maybe I'll, I don't know. Let me see the other one. <laughs> that's too, that's too far away. Yeah, there's, that's nice. Uh -huh. It's, it's yes. gonna work. Uh, this one will be ambitious, but I really like it. Well, I don't want to do the whole thing. I mean, I was just going to crop a lot out. But it gives <laughs> yeah. you more opportunities to see what's in the water. But I think I'll just stick to the first one. Oh, okay. Last week. Are these recent ones from Huntington? Uh, no. They're last spring, I think. Yeah, but, yeah I was there last. I mean, I, I, I teach there, so this is the same time of year. I love that. I love this place. I don't even think the Huntington's open. No, I don't. I didn't think so either. I was wondering. Uh, that was really. But Descanso is opening Friday, you guys, or actually Saturday. Oh. Yeah. So oh. if you're if you're members, you can go anytime. If you're not a member, you need to get timed tickets. Uh huh. But, um, so it's it's going to be open. Take your mask. Yeah, but if we take our masks and we're more than like, let's say we're 10 feet apart, we usually we're way farther than that. We should be okay. Yeah, absolutely. So it's just if you're not a member, you've got to have those timed tickets. And that might be tricky for the class. So I'm wondering if the regular parks are going to do that too. I don't know. So, uh, My neighbor said the arboretum's open. Oh. Ah. That's interesting. That's county. But again, you have to have those so it's just gone so. Well, I've heard the arboretum, you, you, you just have to make an appointment. Yeah, you have to have an hour, but uh, your ticket hour. Yeah. yeah. A time ticket. Thank you. Yeah. This in, in this video. What do we got here? We've got, we've got 12, it's 10 people so far. certainly could do lots of places around the Huntington Library. I wouldn't mind doing the, uh, I have tons of the desert garden. Oh, man. Oh, I bet you do. I mean, that would be great. I love really the desert colorful. garden. Without all the heat. Yeah. <laughs> and I'd have to go look back at my photos, but I'm pretty sure I have some really choice photographs. So I'll have to check. The weird cactus. Those are so fun. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Good morning. Morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, everybody's coming in now. Here we go. There's it's Itsko and Hector and there's Suzanne. Uh, all right. All right. I see. Uh, okay. 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 All right.
right, so here's the subject. I'm going to do the the little bridge going over the lake there, the little pond there, and um, and I'm going to talk about. I'm just going to show you how a really good way, a really good procedure. Rob, do you need to mute everybody and there is record? Yeah. Oh yes. Yeah, let me mute everybody. There we go. Okay. All right, I'm, I'm going to mute. Okay. So, but if you need to say something, just just unmute yourself. Okay. Do you start recording? Not yet. I want to do it. I'm going to do it now. Okay. Could you unmute yourself? <laughs> Thank you. I'm unmuted now, I'm pretty sure. Okay. Um, Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> you, you, can, you guys are waiting for me to do that, huh? <laughs> no, that's okay. Um, so I wanted to talk about this pond here at the Huntington Library in the Chinese garden. And, you know, if it's a great place to go, if you just want to go and, and draw by yourself, I mean, of course you might get people looking over your shoulder, but you know, most people will leave you alone. There's a couple of secluded spots too, where you can sit and, but anyway, um, actually the spot where I, this, this spot right here would be pretty good. Cause you're, you're, you could be, you could, have your own bench. I think I took this from the bench. So if you're worried about people watching you. But anyway, I'm going to do, I'm going to start this thing off, the drawings. I'm going to start them off with a thumbnail sketches. Okay. When I do thumbnail sketches, I know I've done this before, but when I do thumbnail sketches, I want, I want to do them pretty small. In fact, you know what? Let me, uh, let me really zoom in here. Let me see where I'm at. Here. I want to do this kind of small here. But I want to make them about you know, that big or so. There's my thumbnail, just so you know. Uh, maybe I can make this bigger. Yeah, I think that's as far as it zooms in. These are pretty small. Um, I, all I'm thinking about here is arrangement. So right away, you know, if, if you're, you might want to actually draw yourself some rule, the rule of thirds right through your little thumbnail sketch, just to get you thinking. That's all it does, just to get you thinking. Okay, so we have the, um, the mountain. And I'm just going to see it. Pretty, pretty basic. And then uh, we have a couple of trees in front of it. Possibly. And what I want to do is I'm going to, I'm going to bring these foreground that we have these trees in front of it. I'm going to bring these foreground trees down a little bit so I can see the mountain a little bit more. And then we have these willows up and over the front over here. Something like that. And, you know, you might be tempted to put this bridge. It, it almost is right under the peak of the mountain here. Um, so I wouldn't put it right here. I would put it, I'm going to put it over here. And then the water line. And everything above the water line right here will be reflected down below into the water line too. 
I'm just going to make a couple little indications of that. And, you know, maybe like triangle shapes for these trees. Something like that. Um, this tree has a little shadow. This tree here is casting a shadow this way. And the shadow goes down onto the vegetation below and actually onto the water itself here. There's other things. Casting little shadows. And this all gets sort of reflected down into the pond. Now what I've done here is I don't think I have enough. I want to see more water. So I'm going to erase out my bottom there and pull my frame down. Make a little bit more issue out of the water. Got these two big trees reflected in there. And a lot of the mountain color in there. Maybe even a little bit of sky toward the bottom. I like it. One thing I don't like though is that my, my water line is kind of near the center. And that, that just happened because I extended the, uh, the border of my page. Uh, I know that it, in, the, in the picture itself, I don't have as severe of a line, so it might not make that much of a difference. But I think what I'm going to do here, just to, just to make one a little bit more, I think I'm going to chop out a little bit more of my sky, bring that down a little bit. And then I'm going to extend the bottom a little bit and get even more sky and the reflection. And that's just, these are just decisions I'm making on the spot, on the fly. Um, I certainly could, could just do that right in the piece as I'm drawing the piece. Oftentimes when I'm out doing my own thing, I won't make thumbnail sketches and I'll just go for it in the watercolor. Um, this just helps to clear you up and, and give you a uh, kind of a road map, if you will. Yeah. So now I've, I've now this isn't dead center. So this is a little higher than center and almost center though. And um, I'll I'll know that when I when I make the final piece that I want to extend this bottom here a little bit so I can get more water out of it because I, I guess right now I'm just feeling like I want more water out of it you know that's what you do I don't know why <laughs> um all right oh yeah and you and then so the focal point if you want the focal point to be the bridge here possibly then you might want to We might want to put a little bit of detail into that. And, I'll, and that's all I'm doing here. I'm not really putting a whole lot of values or anything into it. This is just sort of a, uh, like a thinking. This just shows your thinking. And I could do definitely three or four or five of these. Sometimes I'll do, uh, how would it look if I did like a, maybe a little horizontal one? So can you see that? Yeah. What would happen if I did a little horizontal one? Um, maybe, but I, I'm still wanting more of the bottom. So I think this might be the way to go. I may do three or four or five of these. By the way, oftentimes you can take care of a lot of this with your camera. You can frame it with your camera and um, you can't do all of it with your camera, but you can get a pretty good idea of what you want. So I think I have a pretty good idea here, I'm gonna put this up to the side here and draw in a, a larger, more thought out, I would call this a rough sketch. Oh, I'm gonna shoot this out a little bit more. Yeah, more of a rough sketch here. So, 
I guess my inclination here is to go or, or vertical. You could go horizontal. You don't have to do exactly what I'm doing. But, you know, so thinking about my little, um, I'll put that over there, my little guy right here, I'm going to go ahead and put my mountains up pretty high over there. Got a little guy there and something back there. And then if I could think of these two trees right here, I don't have to put both of them in. Um, it's too crowded. So even, so even in this rough, I'm still making some big decisions. I think I will put it in. Let's just, let's just put that in. I don't want to get too crowded in here. Maybe that was a good reason to leave one out, huh? So maybe I'll just put one in. <laughs> you see all of this, all of this thinking we're doing before we even get to the watercolor. And this goes pretty fast. Okay, so right there I have a kind of a big round tree over here. And then I had these, I had these other trees in the foreground here, which I, I wanted to really pull down and make a little bit more issue out of the mountain. Because I love those clouds coming down below the mountain. All right, there. And then we have this little willow here. Okay, and then if there's our peak right here, which is sort of a focal point, and I'm going to go ahead and, and guess that my bridge is going to be approximately here. And give it some attention. It's going to be your focal point. It doesn't have to be your focal point. You could have it being like a supporting focal point and have more, you know, more of the detail be on something else. But I, I think that's a pretty obvious focal point there. And it's not dead center in the in the piece. It's a little close to the center. I am thinking I'm going to move it over just a little bit more to the right, just to think asymmetrical. Yeah, over there, I think that's better. It's worth making the change. And you know, if you're already thinking of this stuff now, your your composition is just going to be so much better. Okay, so we have this. We have a little bush over here, and it gets reflected down into the to the bottom. We get another tree, some bushes, and they all get reflected down in the bottom. Now. <clears throat> I'm going to take a lot of this into the water and I'm going to take my bridge here and just see it in reverse down into the water. Somewhere in there. And if you'll notice in the water, it may get distorted. So this distance from here to here in the water may be from here to here. You can see that. Um, I can zoom in on that a little bit more. Yeah. So, so things get distorted and you can cheat a little bit in the water. Okay. So I know sometimes, like for instance, this greenery right here might come all the way down here. My problem is I want to see a little bit of sky. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these tree, the tree line here, that's more there, and I'm going to just, I'm going to put them in the water, but I'm just going to make them smaller. See this, this area right here, I'm not going to take it way down here. I'm just going to take it to about here. The water. I'm going to take this willow here to about there 
I'm going to take these trees probably right out of this tree, I'm sorry. And then we have the mountain that comes to about here. Let's see that the peak of it's around here. And I'm just drawing it in reverse, like a mirror. Might be a little confusing for you. It, This way I get some sky out of it. I certainly could bring this, this uh, mountain into the sky a little bit in my water. And remember the water will be really brushy and horizontal. So you'll wanna, when you're actually putting your strokes on there, we'll use a lot of dry brushing. Um, we're gonna get a lot of these horizontal marks because what happens is that you get a, you get a ripple over the water like this. Oh, let me see. Let me uh, shoot this out a little bit. Okay. So you get a little ripple over the water like this, like this. And, and it creates a little distortion. So some of the sky here goes into some of the bushes over here and back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. And so you get this like zigzaggy pattern that goes along the edges. And if you have a little bit more of a wave, it'll create more of a distortion. Um, the less of a wave, you'll get that kind of glassy look. It is pretty glassy, but there's a little breeze on there, I can tell. So um, you just want to think about what the waves are doing. So the more ripply they are, the more They'll reflect all kinds of things, like the top. The top might reflect uh, the sky. This side might reflect, um, or I'm sorry, this side you might actually see right into, right, right down into the water. All right, and and so there's all kinds of things because you've taken a mirror basically and you've you've rippled it. So it's going to reflect all kinds of little things. You're, you're going to get the sky in there. You're going to get, you're going to see right into the wave. If it's a big wave, like on the ocean or on a lake where it's choppy, you might see right into the water and it gets really green. Um, you might, but, but the less ripplage, if you will, the rest, the less ripply the water is, the more um, you'll see more of a mirror like reflection. So you have to pay attention to that because oftentimes you get a reflection of, of the actual sky in there from straight up above. You'll get all this kind of blue on the water, real choppy. But once you start thinking about it and, and um, uh, using those ideas in your piece, then you can express with it. You can get, you can get fluent with it and then play with it. Okay, so let's, uh, let me just start shading this thing in. In the background, we have some very, very light values of sky. And uh, the mountain's a little bit darker. These tree, trees in the foreground are a bit darker. Just using the side of my pencil. We have some light trees down below these, this tree line. So I'm going to make those quite a bit lighter. And then they get really dark at the base. Oh, that base is back here more. Okay. Things like that. And um, I might want to pull that up higher actually. No problem. You gotta love the gummy racer. It's great. Get yourself a gummy racer. Don't leave home without it. <laughs> and maybe this other eraser, I love it. It's called a magic rub eraser. Those are my favorites. The gummy racer for the soft. So when you really want to get it into a like a, a small little area, and then the um, the magic rub eraser for really pulling out hard stuff. Okay. Now we have this light colored tree over here and this light tree right here. Now the, the light 
is coming from this direction. So if you look at it, this willow is basically a big cotton ball and it will get darker on the left-hand side. And then it's got something dark behind it, some dark trees behind it, I think. Oh, I think that's a pavilion back there. You could choose to leave that out if you like. Okay. And, and this tree over here is pretty light. I'm just gonna hit a little bit of something dark on the left side. This uh, big pine tree, I think redwood tree or something. Um, just think of it as a big, it's a dark object. I think maybe it's not really about getting details in there right now. Maybe something pretty dark on the side though. It's a very dark tree. We got some very white rocks on here. I'll leave them white. And then uh, we've got a couple of bushes, just round bushes. We've got some value to them. Maybe a little bit of something dark at the base. This right here would, would be the reflection of it right here. This is the water line. And under the bridge, there's a few rocks and things. Might even get a cast. The bridge is mostly in shadow. I want to pull a little bit of it in light. So I'm going to pull a little bit of a shadow over the right hand side of it. And so I, I, like there's a little shadow. Creating a little bit of a focal point. We might even want to like hit something dark underneath it just to pop a little focal point there. And then we've got some dark things here. What happens is that this uh, this willow casts a shadow down onto some of these vegetation here, and, and actually a little bit of a shadow onto the water itself. Hard to see it. Okay. Now I would take a lot of these values up in here, right into the water. So let's just start with the sky, pretty light. And we certainly could have done the sky and the water at the same time. That would have been a good idea. Where we're thinking. Okay, let's just make this mountain a little bit darker in the sky. And the next tree line a little bit darker. You certainly could put these in horizontal too, if you like. This uh, willow tree right here, I'll just put that in pretty light and then give it a dark side. It's this side in reverse right here. And we have our dark tree up above. You can give it a couple little hairy things sticking out to the side, whatever. Funny, like a Dr. Seuss looking tree there. Now, um, you have a lot of darks in here and, and a photograph only knows to record what it sees. Whereas when people make um, pictures, we choose to take those darks and, and um, use them the way we want to. We can direct the eye with them. We can create interest in an area. So like I put a lot of dark under this bri bridge right here where there probably isn't any. I might even want to put a little more detail with my, uh, my vegetation in there. See already we've got a focal point. I haven't even hardly started yet. But there are darks in other places and they are dark, but doesn't mean you have to copy them and be dark. This is the difference between an artist who's composing and an artist who's just a slave to what they're looking at. They're just copying. Um, I want to create some darks. So I choose to, I chose to let leave out, there's a pavilion behind this willow tree and it's pretty dark. So I just chose to leave that out. Um, 
we'll see if that was a good choice or not. And then there's a couple of darks at the base of this little tree line in the background here. I want them dark, but I don't want them as dark as this. I'm just going to notice a couple of little darks back there. A couple, couple darks in here. The very dark darks in this uh, redwood. But again, I don't want it to compete too much with that. Also, I've got a sharp line here at the base of my tree line back there, and that's competing a bit. You know, when you have a hard, any hard edge line is going to be, is going to draw your attention to it. I would just soften that edge. So I'll keep my hard edge lines in here. My interest in there. And there's a couple more darks at the base of things. And we wait, we, we may want to take some of these values and just kind of pull in some little horizontal marks. There's my little cast shadow on my bridge. Here. And I'm going to really hit that dark under the bridge, right in my reflection here. creating the eye, keeping the eye in there. I'm going to play some of this stuff down because it's so bright. Just to keep our eye in here. And I'm using the side of this willow here to keep your eye in. Keep your eye in. Even in the reflection. See how you're not really doing reflections anymore. You're you're doing shapes, values, colors, and edges to create kind of stage an idea. It's very different. Okay. You want to play this background right behind the bridge down a little bit more. All right. All right. Certainly could hit some little pockets of dark here and there, but I think that's pretty nice. Pretty decent. Okay. So there's my roadmap. I got my thinking. I got my roadmap. All right. Let's paint. And I'm going vertical with this. Oh, wow. I wonder if I should do this. Well, I'm, I don't know if I'll get any more out of it this way. Let's see. I'll try. Let me shoot this thing out here. Um, I wonder, are you seeing more of this way? I'm just going to do it this way. Yeah, let's see here. I might, I'm going to put my parameters, loose parameters to begin with. The bottom. That's good. Um, 
there's many different ways to do this. Some people like a nice, like dark sort of, uh, line like that to, to start off with. You don't have to do that, but you'll see it has a look to it, especially when you take the watercolor over the line and sometimes it comes under the line, you get this really organic look. The presentation of a watercolor, there's many different ways to do it. And um, it can just be, it can really make the piece, just the whole presentation of it. So um, let's see, let's start off. Let's start off here with, with our lines. I wanted my mountain to be up higher. And you know, if you really want a portrait of, I think that's, oh, uh, it's a Mountain Wilson. No, it's a, uh, I think it is. Then you can really be true to the. Yeah, it looks like Mount Wolves. Yeah. Okay. Approximately there will be my um, tree. And I, oh, in the beginning, I just want to rough out what's what's big and basic in there. Then I'll get into some details. So you may be tempted to want to put some detail into the tree and all that. Watch how I do this. Just I want a willow there. I have another willow over here. Try to not to make the willows exactly the same size and shape. I know they're very close up there, though. Actually, they're not both willows, but I would try not to make these two round trees exactly the same shape. I'm just going to take this one in a little bit lower and a little bit a little bit uh, smaller. All right, that'll be my water line, a little below center. Box clean in there. I want my bridge to be off over here. I'm just losing my lid out of the other one. Um, huh. I, want the, I think I want to make that bridge a little bit larger about like that yeah it's not as arced as I'm making it but I want it to be art if you want it to be art make it art um, uh, look to the center you think it's pretty centered <laughs> no I don't want you to get too close to this but maybe over here yeah all right, let's see. Let's see. Yeah. You know, sometimes you can get away with putting things very close, if not in the center, if they're offset by other things. So oftentimes I'll put things in there not even knowing it, and then later on I'll look at it and go, yeah, but it looks fine. Are you considering the water line to be the center of the page? Uh, no. So the water line here is about, if here's, if there's the, the bottom and there's the top, looks like the water line's around here. It's a little lower. Yeah. So my, my water line, if, if, if the center's here, my water line's pretty much down here. Okay. Yeah. I see. Yeah. And sometimes, you know, I'll even extend the bottom if I want more water out of it, but we'll see. Okay. Boy, I don't like those mechanical pencils. The lead always moves on me. Mm -hmm. I like good old fashioned. Okay. Now I have a couple of, um, bushes and shadows going down here onto the water. Just loosely putting these down here. Okay. 
we have this other tree line. I lost my light. Did that make a difference? I, I put this warm light on there, huh? No, this is better. Yeah. Well, do you like the warm light or no? No. Yeah, the warm light is better. Because now, well, I keep losing my light because of clouds. <laughs> I think the cool light is better. The cool light's better? Yeah, I like that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, And then we have this. Uh, we have we have this tree line in the background, and I said I wanted to make a little bit more of an issue out of the the um, mountain there, so I wanted a little more space in there, according to my little plan. And there's another little tree line. You know, sometimes I'll leave little tree lines out if I don't think it needs it, but I'll put that in there behind this. And there's a little bit of something dark at the base of the tree line there. And some light little bushes behind our bridge. And I wanted a little bit of a cast shadow on the bridge there. I like that. And I'm going to take that bridge and kind of flop it. So if you take the bridge and just sort of like, for instance, if you were just seeing it in reverse. So maybe the bottom would be here. Something like that. And just remember, it, it might not be perfectly round because I'm looking at all kinds of little distortions in it. So it doesn't have to be perfect. Just, just roughly about the same. You can get away with a lot in water. Believe me, it's so fun. If you're not used to painting water, get in there and paint it because it's after a while when you've messed around with it for a while, you'll learn your kind of your little technique. Everybody has a little bit of a different way to do it. And it's um, it's really one of the funnest things to paint because you're painting water with watercolor. Hello, <laughs> how much more fun could that be? <laughs> All right, now, I know I have the, the mountain really high over here, but it's weird because when you're looking at a mirror, which is the water, right? When you're looking at a mirror, the angle isn't exactly the same as when you're staring straight at it. So you may get a little bit less and you could cheat it a little bit, okay? You could just cheat it a little bit and pull the mountain down so we can get a little bit of sky in there. That's my idea. I'm gonna I'm gonna pull my mountain down to about here, pull that tree all the way down into it, pull the mountain down to about there, and and then this round um what do you call it? Like a willow tree into there, somewhere into there. Those are my rough lines. Now, oftentimes I'll just get the painting a little bit more, but if you're wanting a little more security in your drawing, maybe come back in and outline <clears throat> outline uh, what you want your tree to look like. I'm making mine a little more, a little bigger, a little bit more prominent. Something like that. You're just, I'm just looking for a little, like a kind of a silhouette. Now I have these two balls right here that are just, so they're just, you know, until you get into the edge of it, it just looks like a ball. So maybe give that a little love in and out. You've got that tree right there and you've got this sort of tree in here. I want it hanging down a little bit. It hanging down a little bit. You can do that a little bit more. Just remember when you do it in reverse, it hangs up, right? So the, these little things go upward, you know, and they're not as nearly as detailed. You're just looking for basic colors and values when you do, sorry, when you do the, uh, 
in the water. Okay, now I'm going to take some of the contour of this and just kind of pull it right up into here. And I just want to know that I have tree here, sky, and mountain. Mighty mountain. Hmm. And see, look, it's all paint by numbers now. Now we're going to do some kind of tricky. You ready? Here's the trick. Um, let's wet the page first with just water. I'm going to use my little spray here and just Get it nice and wet. Maybe take a, a brush <laughs> over it. Are, are you flat or is it tilted at all? Mine's tilted a little bit. Okay. I just use the brush to spread it around. You know, if your paint comes over the edge, that's great. If it doesn't, that's fine. I'm going to take a little bit of um, ultramarine blue here and just go. Now watch, it'll it'll go right into my mountains and right right across the edges there. It's okay. That. But here's the cool part, right? Take that sky and take it down over here into your bottom of your piece too. Just ultramarine blue. And then you may want to hint a couple of little other colors in there. Um, maybe a little bit of violet. Just add a little touch of magenta to it. Little touch of magenta here and there. There we go. A little lighter. And it'll go right into your mountains. I want the mountains to be they're obviously a lot more magenta and, and a bit darker. So let's make those darker. Um, maybe even darker. There we go. Don't worry about the bleeding, okay? So did you mix the, um, the blue with the magenta? Yeah, I just did the same thing I did in the sky. I just added a lot more magenta to it. Yeah. And now I'm going to put it down to that second later. And don't, don't worry if it bleeds into the next, especially in the water. When you're doing the water, don't worry if it bleeds. That's good. It's good stuff. And the next value is green. Any way you can make a green, really, but uh, Prussian, Prussian blue and cad yellow make a great green. Problem is, is that we want it to be a green that's grayer, so it feels farther away. So you might want to add some red, some red to your green. Back here, I wanted to gray that and some blue. The red will gray it, the blue will make it feel a little further away. There we go. And I think I could almost get away with painting that. I want it a little bit bluer than that. Just adding blue to it. Yeah. Did you use lemon yellow? Uh, yeah, yeah, lemon yellow would be fine. Either yellow would be fine. As I do the water, though, I will put in little horizontal marks like that. Now, 
Now the problem is my water's starting to dry. I mean, my, my paint on my page is starting to dry a little bit. So you can rehydrate it. If you spray it, it'll, this stuff will go all over the place. So I would suggest just putting a little bit of water with the brush. The grape, I know you, you might find this a little, um, a little bit crazy working this way, but the great thing about this is you'll get all kinds of great stuff. You wouldn't get any other way. You get great, great stuff. It's true. I still want those a little bit bluer than that. Yeah, there we go. I'm hinting us just a little bit of blue into that. I'm gonna hit them back here. That really went into my mountains there. Take a little more violet into my mountains there. There'll be room too to, because a lot of this will dry off and just be background. What we're doing right now, we're just doing a lay-in. That's all it is. The wet in the wet land. I'm gonna come with the, there's some yellowy bushes in front of these bluer bushes in the back. I'm gonna get those. I'm just gonna bring them right behind the bridge. Just gonna keep it easy like that. Just really easy. It's fun. Sometimes too, I'll 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 get my page and you know. Use gravity to get it going the other way. Do what you have to, you know? You do what you have to to make it work. Okay, so now we're more up into the foreground and we've got a whole lot of land done really fast. You'll see, it's uncomfortable to lay it in this way in the beginning, but in the end, you're, it gets you to the point of, I call it getting over the hump. There's this hump in the piece where you, it's out of control, it's out of control, and then it starts getting in control. And that's what I'm looking for. So I, I want this tree, I'm gonna do this willow right here. I'm gonna put a lot more yellow into it because I want it to come forward. Our saturated colors will come forward, generally speaking. And I can see I'm getting a little bit dry again. Now remember the the ball, the two balls, so I said that you have a ball of a tree here and a ball of a tree there. I wouldn't paint them in the same color. I know they're both green, but maybe make one a little bit different green than the other. I'm going to go ahead on the other side here. I'm going to make that one also a green, but I'm going to make it a kind of a duller, a duller, redder, warmer green. Just to get a little bit of a change. I don't want exactly the same thing happening over here. Oh, and by the way, I forgot to put that in the water, didn't I? It's really easy to do. I'm just gonna take this color here and put it right into the water. And I'm starting to lose hydration in my, so. You may have to dampen areas again. That's totally fine. I'm just rehydrating the area. <clears throat> Don't worry if it looks blobby in the beginning. <laughs> that was my nickname growing up. It was Robbie, and then it went to Bloppy. I was the, the king of the finger painters. That's what I was. I used to finger paint to like, couldn't see straight. Okay. 
All right. You might have a green tree over here. I think it's a little redder than that. But whoop, that's a little too red. Sometimes I like that. Oh, she did it. Sometimes you'll put something in there that's not quite like what you wanted. Sometimes it's actually better. <laughs> and you leave it. Put that all the way down into here. You might want to just put a couple of little horizontal marks in there. You can tell it's starting to dry up now because I'm getting marks. Okay. We have a yellowy bush here. Slow down just a touch, would you please? I can't. Yeah. Cause then it dries. I know. I'll, I'll, I'll slow down here. Hey, keep going. Um, I, I won't jump ahead though. Let me get this thing laid in and then I'll just stop. Yeah. Now I kind of put this stuff in there. I don't want, I want my bridge reflection to be nice and bridgish. So I'm going to, I just dab that up a little bit. Pretty much done with the land. I'm just going to cover up a couple of more little areas over here. See, now we got it, we got it kind of stained in there. Oftentimes, you'll find in reflections that the reflection will be much darker than what you're looking at. It, on this particular day, it's not that much different. Um, it has to do with a whole lot of little things. It has to do with the angle you're looking at. It has to do with how much, uh, how ripply the water is. It has to do with how much gook is in the pond. You know, if it's really dark and brown, you might have a dark, a darker reflection. But we, what we just put in here are called the local colors, okay? It's just your general, basic colors. You know, I didn't think to pull out a couple of clouds in the background here, did I? I wonder if I can do that. Oh, well. You can always throw them in with white. Sometimes you can add a little water to it like this. See what we get here. That's oh, too dry. No big deal. Let's put a couple of whites in there. I usually do that anyway. And I just get it to here. So in in, in many senses, I I've I've uh, just done a lay-in. That's all. There's no shadows in it. It's big basic colors. I'll be back in a second. Some things ran into other things. Don't worry about it. 
Mine's, mine's pretty damp. I can feel it now. When you feel it, go ahead and feel it with the back of your finger. I mean, unless it's really, if it's really wet, don't feel it. <laughs> it just get all over you. But some people will use a um, hair dryer. And um, some people might, I mean, it, it, it really depends on you. A hair dryer will dry it up really nice and, and set it into place. So what I want to do here first is let's hit some shadows, some big, some big basic shadows. Watch this thing start coming to life. So in the background here, we have some big, basic, small little shadows back there. Way off in the background, they're not very dark. Don't, don't make these shadows very dark. You'd want them actually to be maybe a little bit more on the light side. Um, I think something in the ultraviolet, I mean, ultramarine color would work. And also remember that's gonna dry lighter, so. Just a couple of those guys. And then what you might wanna do is in your reflection, just everything you did up here, Take down here. Now down here, it won't be as literal as up there. So I'll just put this down there, something like that. And maybe a couple little, little horizontal lines. I, I've got some hard edges back here. Um, I think I want to just take a little bit of water and soften those hard edges where the shadow meets the foliage there. Just very faint. You don't want to make a big deal out of it because it's not a big deal. So much of, so much of painting is, is like that. I mean, some parts are really intellectual and some parts are common sense, like don't make a big deal out of it if it's not a big deal. I can say that to my daughter sometimes. Does she listen? What do you think? <laughs> okay. I hope she didn't hear me. She's right in the next one. She's probably, I'm probably going to get it after this class. <laughs> Man, I heard you. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, I'm just going to move forward to this uh, tree here. I think it's a little darker than that. Basically, any color you like will work. I'm going to go for something a little bit more. I'm using violet and Prussian blue. I want that. It's a really nice violet. Just gonna put a little bit on the on the left side there. It's on the left side because the light's coming from the right. And there's a few kind of defining this tree over here. A lot of these colors are the same. I might want to play with those. And it's a very brushy tree. You know, it's a redwood. So we've got some of that down here too. And as I put it into the water, I'll just play with the edge back and forth, back and forth. And you can play with these edges too. I mean, usually I don't do edges until I, till the end, but you see how just all I'm doing is touching this edge here. Little dry brush here and there. You really play with those. Get some gorgeous edges. Again, I'm getting that's the same thing that happened back here, kind of hard edges. So I'm just going to use a, I just have a damp brush with just water on it, you know, no, no, no paint on it. And I'm just kind of massaging these shadows into the light so they're not too hard edged, 
I'm probably going to have to come back and pop a couple of little dark things back in there once in a while. We'll see. Maybe play with some edges. That's the fun part. And don't get it too much into the edges now. I just wanted to kind of let you know. Okay. Now we have also on this big tree here, we have a, a big giant shadow. Okay. Think of it as a ball. Think of that tree as a big ball. So what I'm going to do is now that I have most of the shadow, and see I'm using this sort of dry brush stroke. See it? Doesn't it fit the tree? See? And then and, and, and they, they kind of pull down in a vertical manner. So I'm going to pull down in a vertical manner and get the willowy look. See? So you just fit the stroke and the technique. In this case, that we're doing dry brush, you fit the stroke and the technique toward whatever it is you're doing. And I'm just going to take that right down into the water. Out of that and pull in if you look pull in some little horizontal guys like that. Again, Henry, these, these brushes, this, this, this brush is absolutely perfect for this. <laughs> How about that? I'm using a Chinese brush and I'm painting the Chinese garden. Yeah, but honestly, yeah that was uh, a, the General Wan's uh, calligraphy brush. It is. It's, it's my go-to brush. I mean, look at this thing. Look at the point on it. Look at that. I can't get that out of my Kalinsky Sable. And, and then I can go to a big, fat, dry brush. Just lay it down and get it like an inch, an inch stroke this way. I mean, it does what I ask it to, so that's all I care about. Okay. Um, Brad, where did yep. you, like, can you buy those brushes online? Yeah, Henry uh, uh, has a store. Right, just go to blueheronarts.com. Blue Heron Arts, like a Great blue heron, blue heron arts dot com, and okay, buy. Thanks, uh, Henry. Yeah, that's that brush is a, a set of three, general one brush. W A N G. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Calligraphy brush. That's what you want. I mean, I do little dinky paintings with this brush, so. It's just been, uh, you know, all the other brushes I have of yours, I, I love them. I, I don't use them nearly as much as I use this. <laughs> Everybody has a preference, you know. So, okay. All right, so then this stuff casts little shadows down the side here. Bring a few of those. And so those will get, those will get pulled into the water here like that. that. See, I just, that's just a reflection of that. So I go down to the water line and pull it over this way. And then I'm going to zigzag it a little bit. Into the water, you get to put little horizontal strokes. So it's not nearly as literal as the actual landscape. The reflection. I guess in some cases it could be on, on a really quiet morning or something. Right. I want a really pretty shadow on my on my very light bridge. I'm gonna go with a blue, just ultramarine blue, as if the trees are casting shadows onto it. The bottom will be in shadow there too, a little bit. Maybe even something on the handrail. I just want really, you see, because we have a tight edge there, really pull the viewer's eye in. And I'm going to pop a little dark, just like I did in the sketch. 
Stay right there. That just that just creates the focal point. And now all you have to do is paint a little family standing right over here waving. No, just, <laughs> you don't have to do that. Okay. And just start hitting all kinds of shadows. I see shadows at the base of this tree line back here. Um, I don't want it to be as dark as it is but I want something at the base of the tree line. Maybe something a little reddish back there. I'm seeing some dead stuff, but I, I'm doing it to break up all this green. And I'm gonna leave lots of things soft edged in my piece because it's a watercolor thing. Soft edges, people like watercolors because they're, they're light and luminous and soft edged typically. I like I like watercolor because of all the watercolor effects. I like to see drips and dry brush marks and wet into wet and all kinds of things. Um, oh yeah, I forgot to, if you're gonna put the shadow on the bridge, you might wanna take it, let's take a little bit of that shadow underneath the bridge Put it in there and then take the shadow back that way. Give it a little bit different color there. And, but remember that this shadow probably won't be as defined as that one. So I'm gonna just loosen up the edges a little bit. It's okay if it's not exactly the same color. Mine came out a little greener, but then, you know, the water's probably a little greener, so I don't sweat it. I did paint white right over all the white rocks here. I don't know why I did that. I guess I didn't care. <laughs> didn't make a big deal of them out of the sketch either. Well, anyway, if you wanted to plop some white rocks in there, we could do that too. With a little bit of white. Rob, I'm looking at the mountains and what you did to try to make clouds has formed some sort of light coloring in front of the mountains. It looks good. Yeah, how about that? So all I did was, all I did was wet it a little bit. Just wet it. Let it sit a little bit. Then come back in with the rag and hit it, stamp it. You stamp it. If you see anything out on your rag, you know, then you know it probably picks them up. Well, it did. It picks them up. So sometimes you have to do it a few times. Okay. Now, let's take a look at this thing. So typically in a watercolor, you, you save the darks. The darks at the, toward the end, and then it's details, little accents, and edges. The edges, just remember, most of your detail is found on the edge of the object, whatever it is. Trees, in this case, so many of them are. So just, just, uh, Remember that.
just the, 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 the key to doing water is the, just think about the edges of things. I'm, I got a dry brush here. You can see how dry that is. I'll put it against the white there. And I'm just gonna take a little bit of this, pull it into that, a little bit of this, pull it over there. Same here. Just take the color that's down there, in this case, kind of a violet. So, so you're coming in with fresh paint. You're not spreading paint that's already there, huh? No, the, the paint's dry. Okay. Paint's dry. Uh, I'm just, just dry brushing. Some edges there. That's all. A few edges here and there. And usually at the waterline, if you look, there's usually some dark right at the waterline. Any color you want, just get it nice and dark. Maybe a dark green or a dark violet. I'm using a violet. Just pop a couple of these little darks down at the base there. Just kind of level things out and A lot if you need to. A couple of darks at the base here. Yeah, I think I need some white rocks. I don't know why I painted right over those. But here's a little secret. Now, oftentimes when I'm out painting on the spot, I'll just take a little clipboard like this. I have tons of them. I just pick them up at the dollar store, you know? So I have a ton of them. And I just, I always keep a little white off, off on the corner, you know? Not on this one right here, but I have a couple over there that I do. And I'll just keep a little spot of white on there. And I just use it for making little corrections. But today I'll just put a little white right here. You see that? Yeah. So you can see just a little spot. We can have some in, in light and some in shadow. Most contrast, that's where your eye should go. So when you look, you, you can definitely see the difference between an artist who, who does that and really, and if you're one, it's not a bad place to be. It's a skill you want to get, and then you want water. I'm only using water and a clean brush, and I don't have very much, if you'll notice, it's a dry, it's just a damp brush. It's got water on it. So see how I'm spread. If you can spread the bristles, then it's, it's not wet. If you put too much water on this, it's just going to go all over the place. But see, I can just come back and soften these edges. A little more water than that. And you can get the really, really soft edge clouds that way. And you may have to play with it a couple of times, you know. That's why we do it, right? It's playtime. It's so funny. I, I'll get into these things and then I'll go, oh, I can make a change there. I could do this. I could do that. Then I look up at the clock and there's two hours just going by like that. <laughs> just mute yours. Mute all those colors. I'm going to um, soften these edges too the same way. I'm doing it more of a more of a horizontal manner. Now, since the, the light is coming from the right, we're going to have 
little shadows on the rocks. They're off to the left side. Little shadows off to the left side. And we have these shadows. I, I put a couple of rocks here under the tree. I'm going to cast some shadows over those. Bring some shadows into the water too. <laughs> you to go around here's the magic okay ready for the magic here's the magic there's all it's the magic of watercolor there's nothing but magic here come on already but um make yourself a dark and it doesn't have to be black you know it just has to be darker than most of the things up there and again we don't want to detract too much from our focal point but we do need some dark and if you look into the trees and in behind things and whatever you'll get these little things I like to call pockets, like that, see? See what that does? Pockets, like that. Okay, so bring them down into the water, but when you put them into the water, just put it on with a very horizontal stroke. Take this one down there, maybe something in there, but put it on with a horizontal stroke, that way it'll look horizontal. <laughs> Well, I got away with words today, let me tell you. Um, I'm going to take a little shadow behind the rock there. I'm going to pull it down into the water, horizontal. Little pockets. You could use violet. You could use Prussian blue. You could use any dark you like. Usually a dark green on, a, on an already green thing can be kind of boring. So I, I usually try something a little bit different. Like how about a violet shadow on a green tree? It'll work. I'm going to come back and pop a little bit of dark into this tree here. Hopefully these don't detract too much from the focal points. Um, soften that edge a little bit. Okay. Now I have a, a dry, brushy tree. Look at it. It's, it's, it's mint. This thing is crying to be dry brushed. So I'm just going to go ahead and give it a little love around the edges. All I'm doing is just, I'm letting the bristles do the work here. Let me get a little more green on there. Actually, it is kind of a red or green, isn't it? Come on. Oops. Oops. Although I like that. Listen to that little that little voice inside of you because you might put down a stroke and you go, Oh, that's not right. And then you then you have this other little voice in you says, Yeah, but it looks really good. You know? So what do you do? I say go with the voice that says it looks really good. So remember, I don't know if you remember, but I pull I pulled the I pulled that white right over the tree, and now I'm taking the tree right over the white, like that. Probably a little easier to do in oil paint, but the principle's the same. All right, and some ins and outs. It's not all one value, that brushy tree. With all your trees. Now, I, there's so many scrubby trees around here. Just dry brush away. It's just, this painting is just crying for dry brush. 
little bit along this edge here. A little bit more. I'm going to hit that a little bit stronger there. Pull that right down into my right down into my water. Soften some edges back here. Until we're getting to the end. So I'm starting to play with darks and edges and any sort of nuance or detail. It's a, it's a really good time to step back and take a look at it little more value of that mountain in the water here. And I'm gonna I'm just gonna take that and dry brush it back and forth. We're just disturbing edges. Think of it that way. Because that's actually what's happening. Right in here, we have all kinds of little, I didn't even think about that, little, little shadows and all this brush and things in here. They, in the water, they just get lost into colors and values. There are some little trees and shrubs and things you can hit up in the foreground that might be nice. Um, they certainly aren't the, they aren't gonna make the piece but they might, they might give it a, you know, a little bit of an accent here and there. That's a little dark. It's more of an afterthought. I have a nice little, what I'm doing here is the reason I'm putting this tree here is because it, I'm thinking I need something overlapping overlapping my little rocks and things in the background there. So I'm going to throw that in there and then I'm going to make sure I get it into my water here. Yeah. And before I even put any brush on, I'm just going to go ahead and ch -ch 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 -ch. reflect it into the ground there and then the reason you can hardly see the trees because they're very similar to the background trees. I'm putting this on very thick. This is lemon yellow. See that? You won't see it much. You'll see it though. You won't see it too much. I'm going to pull it right down into here, right into my water. And then I'm going to get some horizontal strokes over it like this. Oh, I think that really worked. Wow. How about that? That's a little charmer. Oh, good. You know, that's what I mean. You got to listen to your little voice inside of you that says, hey, you know, you, you need something there, buddy. I'm going to throw a little shadow on you there. Maybe a little shadow under my, sh under my reflection. Like that. See how that dries up. Uh, the rest is accents, details. Shadows. And edges. Edges are such a big deal at this point. This is this is the time you really want to think about your edges. So maybe you want a little dry brush edge on the outside of my uh, willowy tree there. Maybe I'll give them a little yellow on there too.
if you'll notice, that lemon yellow can get pretty opaque. Put it on kind of thick. Um, you know, you may find that other watercolorists don't agree with that. Um, you know, I, I didn't learn to paint from watercolorists. I learned to paint from looking at master painters because I was just trained academically. And then I, my instructor said, oh, you want to learn watercolor? Uh, okay, you're going to want to look at Turner. You're going to want to look at uh, Constable and, you know, all these. Let's go back to uh, the 1500s and look at Albert Durer. And of course you're gonna, of course you're gonna want to look at all these uh, Chinese sumi painters, all these Chinese. They've been doing it for centuries, and just look at them and copy them, copy, copy, copy. And get uh, get your own idea of what you like out of it. But just, just you know, this whole luminous, the, the whole idea of not using white is, is I mean, that's, a, that's an idea that started in English watercolor clubs. Um, not very long ago. I mean, maybe 150 years ago. It's really an English thing. I mean, if you look at Asian or Indian paintings or whatever, they, they, they use opaque color all over the place. But it's, see, I'm, I'm preserving all kinds of luminosity in here. I'm just, I'm blending it and I'm marrying it with subtle opacities as well, which becomes a, a another duality in the piece. So not only do we have light and shadow, but we have, not only do we have warm and cool, uh, light and dark. We have opaque and transparent color. We have warm and cool. You know, you're always juxtaposing one thing against another. So I always thought it was kind of weird not to, not to have something opaque or at least translucent, to, to juxtapose against something that's very transparent. It just seems limited. But I know those clubs that like to do it, so I could have just left out all the white. And, and... Yeah, I could have left out all the white, white areas. And I do that a lot too. Here. Little pockets. darker back here. So you can, and by the way, with this white, you can just keep coming back into it. And if it gets too faded, just smack a little more white on there. It's all about edges. Maybe I want a little bit harder edge between the mountain and the sky. Two different ways to do that. I could hit the mountain more lap under, or I could hit the sky with a little bit of white. By the way, the more the more and more white you start using, it'll start turning more into a uh, gouache painting. Just so you know, it's not technically a watercolor anymore. Uh, technically, I don't care. You know, technically, I'll do anything it takes to make a good painting. You see now, I can differentiate the mountain. 
from the sky there a little bit, just with an edge. That was with some white. Because I didn't want to, I, I don't think I wanted to make that that uh, that lavender color of the mountain any darker. And by the way, this white will dry darker, and might not make any difference at all. We'll see. A little bit up here. So what I mean by accents is, you know, a little rock there, a little something here, maybe a little tree, another little, little accents of trees and things in the foreground can be really great. Try to blend it into the water. See what happens. And I'm going to leave you with this, okay? Give you guys a chance to mess around. But um, have you ever seen the water? When a little breeze comes up and gives you a little, like a little bit of a, like a little shimmer or a shine on there. Me neither. I'm just okay. So, um, I mean, I got white on here. Try to be very sparing with this, okay? Because you don't want to kill all your luminosity, you know? but watch. See? See what that does when you bring it right over? It feels like... I'm going to really dry brush. I'm going to spread my bristles apart a little bit. Just a couple more. Right up and over things like that. Right out right out of the piece, too. Notice how dark it's dried, by the way. It won't, won't dry as, as light as you think. And just... This is great on the ocean when you're doing oceans, oceans, uh, seascapes. That's all. Probably good enough right here. And just remember, if it gets too out of hand, just take a little water. Just take a little water. Let's say right here, for instance, I could take a little water. Activate it a little bit, and then just take your your uh, paper towel, and and that should dry nice and light. And if that doesn't work, you can just throw it away and start another. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> <laughs> I've never done that before. Okay. So I'll unmute you guys. I'll, let me stop the recording here. Okay, so... I will see you guys back here at, what, 12, 15? Yeah. Okay, guys? Okay.
guys. <laughs> okay, bye. So, yeah, See you later. You. Yeah, we'll have the we'll have the crit at the end, okay? Okay, thanks. I I need to totally use a hair dryer on this. It's still like, wet everywhere. <laughs> yeah. Well, can, can we see your picture? Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank I'll you. leave it there. Okay, thank you. Sure. This is a mess. <laughs> thank you. All right. I'll mute you, and if you want to talk to each other, there's no problem. But I'll I'll just mute. Thank you. So it doesn't get too chaotic. Of course, you can always just shut down, shut down the volume, but uh, here. Okay, I wish uh, everybody is following me there. We are having a break, so now uh, everybody is supposed to finish their homework. As you can see, I paint along with uh, Robert, so I'm almost done, I think. If you have uh, any comments. This is a watercolor painting class, not a Chinese painting class. Um, so we use Chinese brush. Yeah, that's uh, Robert is do, uh, did. So as you can see, his painting is very Western, Western style, but with lots of uh, calligraphy um, in calligraphy brush. That's uh, where you see the east and west meets. You know, the today th there more um, and more emphasis on the strokes, uh, other than shade and uh, colors. So we learn each other in the class. There's a lot of to to learn from each other in this uh, water media. So, um, anybody are watching still? Yeah, um, so what time is it? In 12.15, we're supposed to have a critique of everybody's work. Um, unfortunately, our Zoom, Zoom um, meeting was uh, hijacked, as you probably experience. I'm very sorry about that. I have had to stop doing that um, until I figure out how to prevent that from happening. So next time I have to ask everybody to pre-register because for the short notice I, I, I don't have time to help you register. So next time I will, I will have to manually approve um, everybody, every participants in my online class to get to the live um, meeting room with Zoom. Or I just can broadcast on YouTube, so you, you, you cannot really uh, interact with me, but uh, if, well you can, I think you can do the same thing. Yeah, why don't we just do it on YouTube to so eliminate that 
uh, hijacking possibilities. Again, I'm sorry about the interruption, and uh, I will uh, just broadcast it like here on YouTube next time without uh, going through Zoom. So the, you, you, the only thing is that uh, if you want to join um, the critique and uh, you know the demos uh, directly from uh, Rob, you have to sign up to his class and go to. I'll put uh, his uh, in information in the his website. You can search um, Rob. <coughs> sorry, Rob Shero, Robert Shero, Fine Art dot com or something. Just uh, Robert Shero Fine Art. You, you should see his uh, website and just contact him about uh, the class. Um, during the pandemic, uh, we have to do this virtually, but. Uh, uh, before and then probably after this crisis, we'll resume the life lessons. Um, even then, I plan to do some uh, Zoom or YouTube live broadcast of my my work in the in the uh, class, so we can uh, all learn together and uh, to 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 fuse the Chinese uh, the East. In the West. Okay, let me take a distant look. I try to avoid overdoing, overdoing this. So uh, let me see. Where's the picture yeah there, there's some a little bit white cloth already there I don't like to use too much opaque although I did follow Rob's uh, demos and I did some uh, ripples with a uh, brush I, I, I try not to do that uh, to, uh, on this in the sky part I can wash out clouds if I want that's really nice this nice in clouds in the mountain I think you can see it this just naturally happen it's it's all um, about decision you know what to keep and what to to change if you some you know, something like it you don't have to copy the teacher's uh, message so it's it's all ac accident um, has you know some expected some unexpected uh, you have to make judgment on each occasion whether to keep that or to change it. I think um, there is some dark around the focal point I want to put in. I think that there is some on the photo we see some darks right above the bridge. It's not as dark as the photo but I want to put an emphasis on that. Makes this part really shadow. With some, I think there's a pavilion behind the tree in the picture. If we really zoom in, you see that it, it has some kind of re uh, red, red um, pillow kind of thing there. That creates some contrast. I think it would be nice to to have. Just a suggestion of the buildings. I'm just hitting more dark on this side of the bush or something. And the rock cast the shadow. Ground. Okay. It's all about shadows in Western art. And the reflection. We don't really do that. For some reason, in Chinese art, the reflection, the shadows, that's, I think that's very uh, contemporary too. I mean, modern in Western art until Renaissance, uh, we, we try to do this kind of uh, perspective, reflection, and uh, proportion. 
In my other class, I mentioned uh, the three P's for composition, placement. So we talked uh, a lot about this, the thirds in the off-center, where the focus is. That's really the same with any kind of uh, art, visual art. Um, and we have to consider proportion and uh, placement of grouping and, and uh, uh, separation kind of and we did uh, some uh, something like you know we have to cut off one tree from here I was debating on that w when I do the sketch I had two trees here and this is really important part this is what we call the idea comes first thinking the keyword is thinking first so you have to have this kind of mind image that's a map of your mind must in your mind um, then you do this you already have solved all the issues the problems with the thumbnails you see I uh, try to to make uh, the, the area perspective is from yellow to green to kind of purplish uh, lavender, uh, gray, uh, not to like a ultramarine uh, sky. So we we have a kind of very English style here, but a little bit more uh, gouache kind of here and lots of calligraphy here and there the dotted lines the lost in the font edges it's all very uh, traditional in Chinese painting and we play with the cool and the cold Just one little, uh, you know, for the rock, you should see a little bit contour, things like that. To be, um, we can use a tiny brush, but I just use this uh, stiff natural hair brush. We call it a warp hair. Mm. This is not really, it's a natural. Natural hair is very soft. After it soak a while, it can a while, it becomes even softer. That's the natural of uh, this kind of natural hair brush. So I try, try to create some kind of line. I think that's really nice in the teacher's. Features. I should put that to the real level. So we can have little figures, but <laughs> never mind. Okay, 
so it's hard not to overdo it. I like that dark there. I love it. Uh, you know, anyway, you should need to have large, medium, small grooving. That's universal. Maybe I'm get too off here. Yeah, we cover that. I think you should not go um, this over like four layers according to watercolor theory or something. Otherwise, you'll get muddy. So, just stop. There's a little bit accident to there is lavender. I think I like it. A little warm. So I'm gonna sign and submit my work. I I think I may do it on a rice paper since we have half an hour left. So let's just finish this one quickly and sign in it. And I'll do a, a, a Chinese brush painting study to see. Because this is a Chinese garden, that's why I, I never done this in his class it's so far. But I always, uh, uh, we have some Japanese student, Japanese um, heritage, heritage, Japanese heritage student in his class and doing something similar to mine. We always talk about uh, what about using rice paper. Chinese style, yeah. Okay. So I think if we sign Western style, it will be on the bottom somewhere like uh, just use my Chinese signature brush. Contrast color. Cursive style. You know the, the logo of Blue Heron? It's the, the H. If I do the B, it will be BH. That's my signature. Let's put the year 20. I like to put the year because it's easier to for me to keep track. Okay. This is my. I'm gonna take a picture. Submit to the class. Or maybe it's better to wait it dry, so the color will be either, either lighter or darker. I think. I'm going to put this aside and then I'll do a quick one. Okay, here's uh, the, the uh, rice paper. I just put two layers because got some stains and you use it. This is a mulberry number two, I think. This is the stringing fiber in it. And uh, the best part of this kind of paper is that we can paint on both sides. So let's start from uh, the back side. Okay. Let me just draw bridge, something like that to start with. 
I don't use ink. Maybe just use some uh, some uh, grays here. And then we got. This is the front. This. Let's see. Oh, this is the back. All right. I was thinking to wash it first, but in, in Chinese painting, we always do the ink work or the outline first. So I'll just draw this bridge. Okay. And some rock. Some uh, the Bones. So we have certain uh, kind of uh, wrinkle technique style guy, style types. So for this kind of stone, we we do it like this, horizontal and vertical. That that's the classical way of doing river bank like that. So we just do that. Uh, I remember the composition. Let's just draw these this sky lines, these tree lines. Uh, this is going to be watercolor. So this is this background. I'm gonna not. I'm not going to use any outline. Just draw this. Uh, this. There's some. Lavender in it. We don't usually paint this blue sky in, Ch in Chinese painting. I don't know why we, we don't see the blue. According to scientists, to the think all the culture has culture has this this early culture you know the people don't have the word for sky or the green. They think it's green or not not blue. I mean, there's no blue sky in China. <laughs> I think that's the probably choose in ancient time already, not just because the the pollution. So let's try to get the right color for this. It's a little bit long. Let's just get some more blue. I'm using a hack hacky brush. Just the uh, some you know oh contemporary British artist use this. Creative mark is what I got I got from a Western art, art store. We also carry it in, carry it in Bohan Arts. <coughs> Got yellow ochre, bronze, and kind of purple for the next one. You know, any any uh, multi color. If you got enough water, it's very nice, especially on rice paper. Gold and green. Oh, I like that color. Daniel Smith, uh, I think. Gold and green. And just add some uh, shaded color here. I'll leave some white, it's nice. And this is the movement of the willow, weeping willow. Okay, now the tree on this side should be a little warm. Oops, too, too red. 
And we can blend it right on the paper, you know. Instead of on the on it. I'm do I'm basically trying to do watercolor on this paper to see what happens. And we got some uh, some gray lavender, whatever left just for the stone. Greenish, bluish. This is the light or we can shade it shade it. Shade it later. Is it hurt? Okay. So should be much darker than this side. Okay, now the the bridge should be a little lavender. And this cast shadow, we'll do that later. And then this, this is the refraction. Okay. Now let me do the water. I would need to reflect that tree on top. It should be darker on the uh, reflection, I'd say. Sometimes lighter, but sometimes the same. I'll just throw some raw color and let it blend right there. I think on rice paper we do the ripple first because that will create, um, you know, especially on rice paper, it will create the the surface, and then you everything will be you paint after that it will be behind. That's how we do it on rice paper. Let's see how this goes. Let's see if we if we do the ripple first and then we'll just do the verticals like that yeah see that especially on the unsized shrug paper that will create the depths whichever uh, come first will create a, a, a water mark around it that's how it works Where's the distant? We have to leave no white in western thing, you know? So it has to be a reflection of the distant mountain here. Lots of uh, red in that. this sky okay. no, just block it let's just do the sky we see lavender I'll give it a wash this See what happens. Okay, on rice paper, the water goes where it's drier. So you, if you want the stop you know the possibility of that purple to blur we just put uh, more 
blue in the sky. So it would push the paper. You keep the back the green, the purple away from the sky. If the sky is drier, it will blur up, just like here. But I like this uh, this effect. It's uh, nice. You want to, to create a blur upward. Then you just add some uh, water on this side, and you will you will see you will push the the vegetation go up. That's how the water goes on the rice paper, which is fun. And we don't use another piece of rice paper under it because that way kind of stop the movement of water. We just put the felt. The felt is not absorbent. It holds the moisture temporarily, so let it um, move on the paper later. So that's why we use we don't use blotting paper or really you can you can use newspaper, you know, as, as a newsprint, but you will create some stains, kind of hard edge. Um, and another thing is that we don't keep working on the wet. So it will start fuzzy. So that's the difference between soft uh, this kind of paper and the, the machine made uh, western paper like, like this. You can keep working on it, wet into wet, no matter how wet. But still, you know, you don't want to work too much. It will become uh, muddy. Plus, you know, create other problems. You can stop bleeding by blotting the surrounding area of the white. So, just give some, uh, like, a drier area around it. So the, the water will not smear into the precious white, unpainted white. Okay, and we'll just leave it to dry. We can use a hair dryer. I, I think it's better to let it do the work, do the you know the, the smear because when you dry it, it um, it's. It stops something unexpected to happen, you know. So we, we usually just let it dry. In this weather, you know, climate in Southern California, it's very dry. I think some place like Texas may be the same. So you don't need to use hair dryer. <coughs> you just wait. Um, meanwhile, let's see what we. We have any questions? We have three people watching on YouTube. Um, we had uh, more than three before in, in the Zoom class. It was interrupted. I wish they figured out how to follow me on YouTube. But um, um, let me see if I can send a link to my class so they can come back. How do I share it? Let's see. Watch. Yeah, if you subscribe to my channel, you should have notice uh, automatically when I go live, right? I'm going to send this to my online class. We've got a chat room here. So we can post this link.
to change this zoom into YouTube. Security is my first priority, so if someone hijacks our meeting, we have to stop it. No other way I can get. So from now on, we have to be on YouTube only. But I do have paid Zoom class with a restrictive registration requirement. You have to open an account to verify your ID to get in. So we hadn't had any problem with our private Zoom lessons. So if you are interested, uh, visit brewhammerarts.com and next Friday we'll do a live class on Chinese brush painting step by step, okay, demos and uh, painting along. I don't have much time to wait for this to dry. Let me just find it. Where's the hair dryer? dry. So I'm going to add the darks, which the pine tree behind this corner here. It's a uh, uh, kind of warm green, so I just add hello red with uh, several green. Still too wet, but I think we can get that wrong with that. Okay, we just make a some distance tree, this is more green. Shadows. 
correction. Yes. Did Robert say we're coming back at 12 or 12.15? I think at 12.15. Oh, okay, great, thanks. I turn over and apply some wash to, to make the bridge a little wider. And uh, you can also bring out some uh, rock. It, it will not cover the front the, the
the ink. Oh. Yeah, this is how we do it. You can do it right here if you want. Also, just like that. It will be more subtle to be on the back. Because when it dries, it, it will become just like a white paper, not the gouache. Okay, but now we need to do the ripple. It's a little bit of uh, gouache. Like that. Okay. A bit. All right. I don't have time to finish R, just to uh, have to leave it. Uh, the challenge is uh, how do we dry it? We better mount it, you know. I don't have the uh, silicone paper. What I have to do it later, but uh, anyway, I'll just take a yeah, just dry it. It's a air dryer. to the teacher to crit uh, critique. So this is my uh, watercolor piece. So you can take a picture right here. I like that uh, extra margin you see the jewels on the uh, paper. I didn't really do that before until recently. I find it's a good good way to do watercolor, show the, the, the media the best. Should we submit this one too? I don't know. Let's see. Well, it looks fun. It's not signed, but it's fine. Just see. Okay. We have five minutes to start to the critique. Let me email Robert. Sometimes I have trouble to make it uh, straight, so I take another shot, just in case. I mean, orientation. Okay, let's send it.
Okay, everybody. If you can hear me, um, please mail me. Looks like I've got some mails already. Okay, good. Just mail them, and then when you mail them, try to shoot them so I don't have to rotate it in my uh, email. That way, I can just I can just do them right off my email. <clears throat> And if you're not sure which way to shoot your your picture, just shoot it one or two or three ways. You know, like landscape or portrait or whatever you like. Robert. Yes. I, I sent you two pictures, uh, three files, but uh, two pic two images. Um, just if you yeah. you you like, you can. Um, you, you you don't have to critique two, but uh, there's one I did on rice paper. Okay. Anoth another one is on regular arches. All yeah. right. I see. Did you did you already send it? Yeah. Okay. Let's see. Because I don't, I don't have it yet. Oh really? Okay. <clears throat> Let me see. Yeah, I have Katie and Robin and Alice. Let me check if I send it correctly. Rob, Rob, Rob Art one one. You know it. I think you might have to check your trash can. I I had problem last time. To send you. Well, oh, maybe it's in my all my trash. Would you think it'd be under all mail? Maybe. See. Try that, yeah, because uh, it's under uh, Victoria and Henry Lee. Um, yeah, I don't see it. Let me, let I know, me. I usually see hers, so I don't see it. Okay, let me see if I, I can... I would be in my trash. Let me see. Looking trash. Uh, let me send it again. So, I... Where should I... Out of my trash. Uh, so, Rob, or... Let me see, Rob... Yeah, R O B A R T one one. Yeah, that's what I got on uh, uh, Gmail, right? Yeah. Okay, I'll send it again, but uh, you know, you know some last time. Yeah, last time it didn't work. I have to share my screen, you know, but this time I cannot share screen because I'm using a, a iPad. I don't have a cam good camera on that one, so I have to. Yeah, there must be some sure. issue in there because you know it. It happened last time. Yeah, mm -hmm. Henry's pics. Let me just send it again. Um, do you have a maybe another email? I'm not sure if you have. But I will. Yeah, send I have another. Uh, can you, can I cc to another email maybe? Yeah. Um, R S H E R R I L L. So that's R Cheryl. Let me see how do I do it. Um, can I? See? Okay, R Cheryl S G E R R R I L L R Cheryl Yeah. At Earthlink.net. Okay. Okay, that's good. Earthlink.net. Okay. So I will send uh, to both emails. Your, uh, okay, let me now attach attach picture. Oh. I wonder why it doesn't come to my email. Because your other emails come to my email. Yeah, I think it maybe the attachment or something. It just uh, I don't know why. The last time we I sent twice also, but it didn't go through. So let me try this. Uh, you know, post your emails this time. I guess I sent medium size. It's only six meg, six and nine meg. Is that too big? No. That's that's pretty big, but. Oh, I don't okay. know if it'll come in. I don't know if it'll come Maybe in. Maybe I send just one file at this next time. I try. I try to send less. Okay, send yeah. just one one picture this time. See if, if that if that works. Okay. Okay. Let me just send one. One at a time. Let's 
So I sent just one file this time, at least. Just two mags. Yeah. All right, you guys. We're getting them in there. We've got. Well, we've only got one, two, three, four, five, six people so far. We need. Yeah. A whole bunch more. <laughs> yeah. All okay. right. Check my email again. I I desperately try to get to you. Let me see what I can do. Maybe, okay, another thing is I can log to your Zoom just in case I can share screen. So I'm, I'm logging with another Zoom session. Um. I can log into your Zoom meeting with my phone so I can send it, uh, share screen. Oh, wait, wait, I got you. You got I it? I got you. Great. Yeah, there it is. They're all vertical, but oh well. <laughs> You, you shot them all. Uh, you shot them all How the same. Oh, it's yeah. all upside down. No, they're all tilted to the left. Oh, I don't know why. <laughs> Let me see. Just How shoot them in different ways. I don't know why. At least they got you. But yeah, try different. Uh, uh, you know, try the last one. I I did the different. Um, let me see. You know, I wish I could rotate this thing, then it wouldn't be a big deal. Oh, okay. Henry, um, what, Henry, what camera are you using? I just use the phone, uh, my phone. Well, I iPhone, you, if my, you go to set, crop, um, you can... Yeah, yeah I, I, I will check the orientation, but it looks correct on my side. Yeah, it's, Isn't it's that weird? Yeah. Huh. Okay. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight people so far, and we have a whole bunch more. Okay, I, I right, you guys. I'll double check. Rob, well, I'm sorry, but I'm I'm not through. I can send what you have, but I'm not through. What do you want? This is Lynn. Okay, no, I'll, I'll just start then. Do you want me to For send those you what of you, you that are? I'll just start. You can send it uh, as we go, I guess. Okay. Right okay. Thanks. And anyone else? I just don't want this to get in too long, but okay. All right. I'm going to start with Katie, okay? Uh-oh. Oh, Katie? Yeah. <laughs> oh, Katie, oh, Katie. Let's see. Sorry. Are you? Oh, Katie. Uh -oh. oh, oh, Katie. No, oh, Katie. Oh, that's all. <laughs> Sorry, Katie. We're, we're not making fun. Okay. Can you guys see that? <clears throat> Oh yeah. Yes. Uh -huh. Very pretty. Yeah. Beautiful. You know, yeah. That's looking it. real really so nice, Katie. Nice. Wow. Thank you. Are we recording? Yeah, recording, oh, please. Record. Uh, yeah. Thank you for telling me. <laughs> yeah. I didn't see my I little, forgot again. The little light. So a yeah, little red there we go. Yeah, that little red dot wasn't it's there. Gone. All right. Thank you for telling me. Wow. Turn this off so I can see. Okay. All right. Looks good. Um, yeah, my, my initial impression is I, I really like your colors and values. Yeah. Okay, let me get my little marker here. And so see the top of this tree right here? Mm-hmm. I would soften that edge a little bit. See how hard of an edge it is? Yeah. Um, and you can do that just by taking a little bit of water. I mean, you guys are probably getting the message now. It's not too hard. You just take a little water, let it sit on there, and then dab it with your um, with your rag. Okay. That's a, sometimes you can also take a stiff brush if you have a bristle brush or something yeah. that's a little bit stiffer, you can loosen it up that way. Okay. Yeah, it's not too hard. All right. Um, now, if you're wanting to, you don't have to, but if you want a little bit more of a focal point right here, I would take some of that white and pull it in, you know, maybe right into here. Okay. And if you don't like it pure white, you might want to glaze a little bit of something warm into it, like a little bit 
Okay. That's a little bit too white, but I mean, um, yeah. If you, if you wanted it a little more, a little bit more of a focal point. <laughs> Rob, do you wait till the white dries and then glaze it, or? Yeah, yeah. Wait for it to completely dry first before you glaze it. And then you might, if you're going to do that, maybe take a little bit into the water here. Okay. You know, that kind of deal. And let's see. And then I could possibly see a couple more little highlights, you know, here and there, if you like. Maybe I, I would think you'd get a little bit more, a little bit more white on some of these rocks. Okay. So they can, they can add. You know, obviously those are too bright, but I mean, yeah, that that okay. idea. And. Um, this really came out good. Your clouds here, I, I mean, I hard, I wouldn't even know that you used white in that. Mm. So, good. Yeah, that's the idea. So you want to cover up your white? I thought it was no problem. Oh, it just looked, it looks really nice the way she did that, yeah. Okay. Katie, I love your painting. Thank you, Alice. Really nice. <laughs> nice. Thank you. So you know what, uh, Katie? Maybe this is the way you should start start off. More more wet into wet. Maybe. Yeah. Everybody's got a thing that works for them. So. Yeah. You know, I, I don't usually, I don't always start off this way. I mean, uh, <laughs> but it, it 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 gives you good results. So. But I boy, it sure looked like it was out of control. In the beginning. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it was yeah. so wet. Mine too. <laughs> so it's kind of a roller coaster ride, huh? Yeah. <laughs> what I did, I took mine out to the sun. Mm. Oh. When it was all, oh, everything was so wet. So that helped. Yeah. Hopefully. Yeah. George, you maybe don't have a blue dryer. Why is that? Yeah. I used a hair dryer when, when Rob yeah. said, okay, we're, um, go to it. I had to, I had to. I had to dry everything. <laughs> I did too. Yeah, hair dryer is great. <laughs> I hadn't started yet, so yeah. Sometimes the, the sun is really great because you don't get the wind, you know, so uh, it might blow things around. But that's it's, true. It's, the, the water's absorbed into your piece, and you're just looking to, to to dry it. Then I don't think it matters. Yeah. I use hair dryer all the time. Okay, very nice, Katie. Very nice. Thank you. I'm very happy. Wow. Okay. Yay. Yay. <laughs> okay. Robin. Hey, hey, hey. Ooh. Hey, Robin. Looks like Robin there. Yeah, can I send you another one? I, I, I've worked on it since I, since I sent you that one. Can I send you another one and you go to someone else? Such a perfectionist. Okay. <laughs> Thank All right. you. Sure, I'll, I'll, I'll trash this one so I don't get mixed Yeah, up. put it in the trash. <laughs> All right, Alice. Oh. Very nice. Oh, wow. I could not get time to stay wet. I have a fan above me. Yeah. <laughs> Just, I finally gave up. Is it Beautiful. warm in there? Is it warm where you are? Not too. I'm upstairs in, on my loft, so it gets much warmer up here yeah. than downstairs. Right, so... If you if it's warm and you have some breeze going, your painting will dry twice as fast. As yeah. Warm. <laughs> okay. Uh, really nice looking colors. The yeah. blue in the water really makes it. Wow. I want to jump into that water. <laughs> now, I don't know if you're aware of this or not, but it almost looks as though we're looking down into it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. A little bit. That, that's not sure. wrong. I mean, that's that's not necessarily wrong. So. It just, uh, it's, I don't know why, I think it has to do with this angle, right, right here, and here. Yeah. I think uh, when I did mine, I think I did it a little bit more flat like this, a little more flat. Oh, yes, yes, I see that. And it's okay, though, you know, it's okay. Um, I do that a lot, actually. <laughs> Yeah, yes. perspective is... It's good to know that. Very nice. Okay, so... 
Oh, look at here. You've got... These trees look great, and then you went ahead and put the shadows down below them. I think that looks great. Mm-hmm. The light from below. Yeah, that looks right. That's really nice. I mean, the thing is, is it looks believable. Yeah. It totally looks believable, so, yeah, leave it. So redo the whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now, I might, uh, you see this little shadow you have under here? Yeah. Um, I might continue that with a little shadow under here. Oh, yeah, yeah. Maybe even a little bit onto the rocks here, a little bit, possibly. You know? mm-hmm. And, and you got, it looks like you have some under there a little bit, maybe. I could see a touch more. That reflection of this on here is perfect. Look at that. Wow. That's a great, ref that's a really nice reflector. And did it take you a lot of effort? Say no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, no. <laughs> oh, see, it was, it was as easy as, some, sometimes, it, sometimes the hardest looking things are the easiest. And also the reverse. Sometimes the easiest looking things are the hardest. It's weird, but. So that was, that was, that was hard, huh? Getting that reflection? Oh, yeah. Oh. Oh, well, it looks really good. I mean, it didn't look like it was hard. Well, I, I, I used white whenever I needed to make corrections, so. Yeah. It's, yeah. Did you, did you add a little blue into the, a little white into this blue right here? Uh, first I added white, then it was too white, and I added blue on top of yeah. that. So, yeah. Yeah, so the more white you add, the more it just basically turns into a gouache painting. Right. And that's not, that's not wrong, anyway. Um, some people consider, it depends on who you're talking to, because some people consider gouache watercolor. And some people say, no, 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 there's a big difference. You cannot go, you know, they're really strict on the whole thing. Yeah. Well, I consider gouache just <laughs> opaque watercolor. I mean, you know, besides France, Everywhere else, they call it opaque watercolor. <laughs> uh, I don't know why. I don't know how gouache. I don't know how the word gouache stuck, but oh well, it stuck. So, um, yeah, and it really feels like you have a like this bush right here is casting a shadow right over it. It really feels right. Yeah. It really feels right. And did you see that little glaze I put over there? Yeah. yeah? Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> so maybe even a little bit. Maybe even a little bit darker with blue or something. Yeah. I can see that. Just to give you a little punch. There. But, uh, it's pretty. Yeah, it is. This is a really nice one. It's so pretty. Nice one. And if you like, you like what I did is I took a little bit of white along this edge here. If you want some separation between the mountain and the. Um, I had the same issue. Oh, yeah, that would look. Yeah, thank you. A little bit, like a little cloud, cloud work back there could could do it. Yeah. Yeah. Just a touch. Easy. This is nice the way you left it. Now is this the white of the paper here, or is this just white paint? Some is white of the paper. Some I I, I lost track. You know. Yeah, that's that's a good move. Um. Yeah, I mean, uh, now some here's just another little thing, you guys. Um. Because you're looking down into the water, oftentimes what happens is that you'll catch the underside of these trees here <laughs> in part of the reflection. So like like under here, you don't see it at this angle because, let me, let me get my little arrows here, because we're, we're sort of looking like down on this. We're looking down into it. But what happens is that we hit our eyes look down into the reflection and the reflection reflects from the bottom of the tree into there. So you might actually get um, a lot more of the bottom of the tree in here. So sometimes if you, if you just look at the photo, sometimes you'll see it, you'll see a lot more of the bottom of the tree in there than the top. Yes. Yeah, yeah. so, besides that, I mean, you know, I, this is this is really nice. This is really nice. Um, any kind of, if, if anything, maybe some edge work, mm -hmm. uh, and that can, that's just something you want to 
you want to think about on your own uh, a little edge work in here a little edge work here just like in here maybe just to separate this tree from them a little bit more yeah you'll get more crisp edges that way kind of dry brushy crisp crisp edges <coughs> if things are getting mushy on you okay maybe in there maybe right here just to separate this bush from the background not that dark but something some little edge might, might work okay thank you very nice okay who we got next we got uh diane oh that's pretty diane you got some nice dark nice looking darks in this tree right here oh man i ran out of time and wanted to put a few more like kind of darks um in other spots but yeah to just to separate um things a little bit or you know change the value just a little bit yeah yeah but. yeah what well, one, one place you could do it is like maybe along this edge mm -hmm. now one thing no one way you can do it you don't have to do it with yellow although you probably certainly could but if you use a like if you just dry brushed a little bit of white in there oh I mean, okay not, not pure white just a little bit of white let it dry and then glazing your color over it you could you could get a more crisp edge there okay anywhere you want a crisper edge possibly there possibly here wherever you like these are looking really nice and crisp that, that's one thing about the wet into wet thing uh, you get a lot of mushy edges. Oh yeah. <laughs> so, so there's the downfall and the plus. You know, every time you do something, there's a downfall to it and the plus side to it. So, um, anyway, your focal point looks great. Oh, great. Thank you. See how we just sort of radiate out, radiate out from there. Mm-hmm. Just a. Nice looking reflection there. And look at the reflections, you guys. These are these are great, literally perfect right there. But what makes this rock looks rocky, rockish, is that um, you have this dark green behind it back here, really separating the rock from the background. Here, I think if you use something a little bit darker, a little bit darker green. In this area oh yeah I, I didn't get to that yeah I see yeah. it now. I can really see it now but yes Same idea yep. definitely yeah and by the way you don't have to necessarily use this uh, this sort of yellowy color back there you could use let's say for instance possibly the, the underside the underside of this tree here uh -huh. could could be what's being reflected down into here oh you know? okay oh yeah and yes. even if it isn't Sometimes even if it isn't, I'll do it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> because I just try to do what works. Okay. And it's not that that isn't working. This is this is fine. But I, I think I might put a little bit of something in there just to see. Oh, sure. Okay. All right. Beautiful piece. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Got some nice little streaks going in there. I like these. Yeah. I added those with them. Um white didn't you say they'll just add a little bit of white streaks just wow you did yours you did just really light oh my my streaks oh. yeah yeah i guess my my um my water i mean it wasn't it wasn't um dry enough yeah uh -huh. too much water i mean yeah uh this is nice really nice composition Oh, that's your composition. <laughs> but thanks. Well, then it's really nice. No, I'm just joking. Oh. <laughs> Sorry about that. Awful, awful. Okay. Yeah. Just think about you know a, a little bit, a little bit. Just it's it's mostly edges. It's it's all edges okay. actually. Yeah. It's all edges in this. Okay. Oh, one one quick little thing too. Um, you see all this this tree. Is kind of round. It kind of fits. Yeah. In the I might. Uh, 
I, I got a new word for you. Ready? Okay. I might irregularize this. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. It's awful. Yes. Uh, you no, know, just 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 give it a couple of, uh, you know, a little a little ir irregularity. Okay. <laughs> I can while. really see Fair that. The <laughs> right word. <laughs> no, okay. I get it. <laughs> okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we got Suzanne. Okay. Ooh, Suzanne. Ooh. Wow. Well, pretty. I don't know. I did the wash thing first, and it was all kind of bland, and then I think I went overboard with the detail glazing. <laughs> That's a little bit Here, much. Here's a little secret. Um, okay, what, what happens here? Let me come up into this. What happens here is that sometimes... The shadow gets a little too distinctly different than the light. Okay. Uh -huh. So what you what you can do is just come in with some half tones, like um, it's a little. Whoops. Sorry. Some little half tones, like in here. I don't know if I'd use blue, but um, like a blue green, possibly. Some little half tones in there, just to transition it from the light to the shadow. Uh huh. Just a couple more little half tones in there. You know, the other. You know, I'll, I'll tell you what I do. It's a little more risky, but it's 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 really fun. Um, I take a big old wash over the whole thing. And then I just dab with my uh, with my paper towel. I just dab up. Oh, okay. I dab up the lights wherever I want there to be light, and it works. It works really well, and, mm. and it kind of it instantly harmonizes everything. So, yeah, there's just a lot of separation. Yeah. Well, you, you you know you did it pretty consistently all over. So. I, I know. So it's kind of boring. <laughs> A stylistic move. Yeah, it really is. Yeah. Okay, I, I might come in with a little more shading on this tree here. Um, okay. A little, a little deeper in there, and then make sure you take that into here when you do that. Right. Put that in a little bit more. Um, I might have a little darker shadow on the ridge get in there it's it's all glazing it's all everything i'm everything i'm talking about here is is a glaze glaze and blot uh-huh <laughs> it's the glaze and blot <laughs> yeah it's a little more glazing into the shadows possibly there these are correct They're great this looks great right here Little more in there. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, you got you got the tree reflection in there. Very nice. Well, you totally understand the concept. So it's just a question of and you you know if you work if you work this wetter, I know you're probably thinking, uh, it gets out of control, right? Um, yeah, it, it did in the beginning. It was just all kind of woo. So then I thought, okay, I, it's just too wet. <laughs> right. So that's when I just started the glazing. But if, and you know, this is the English way, by the way. This is very English to do this. But an English painter will take, you have like three steps. You have light, medium, and shadow, right? Right. Um, they'll put like 10 steps in there. Uh, they go light, medium, plus medium, plus medium, plus medium. Uh, <laughs> I mean, it's many, many steps. Um, so, what I do is I usually just take a harmonizing glaze because what happens is, can you feel that it looks possibly... Uh, not everywhere, but a little scattered in places. 
Very scattered. Yeah. Scattered. The word. Yeah. Okay. So, so let's say if it's getting kind of scattered in here, what I'll do is I'll take I'll, I'll take a glaze over the whole thing, kind of a harmonizing glaze over the whole thing, and gather it up together, so it feels like it's in shadow, and then if it got too dark, I might blot it. Um, if there's something about it, I might blot it. But other than that, I just, I let the glaze, I call it a harmonizing glaze. And the harmonizing glaze will bring all of this together, like for instance on this. Right. Okay. Yeah. Um, so try, try a few of those, a unifying glaze to, to bring the whole thing together. Okay. Yeah. Because it, it just means that you got, you, you got really drastic from your, your light to your shadow. Right. That's not necessarily wrong, though. In fact, the, the fact that this that you see all the steps in there is a, it's a step in the right direction. No pun intended. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Thank you. Sure. Harmonizing glazes. That's what I'm looking for. Okay. And we got uh, Daniel. Daniel, hey, very wet and wet. Good day to you, sir. All right. So soft. Yeah. Like a, almost like a pastel. It's really high key. That's mm -hmm. unusual. Are you are you using a lot of white in there? None. None. No. Okay. So just a lot of water. Okay. Yeah, a lot of water. Yeah. You know, I instantly look at this little. Oh, that's the water, huh? Is that wet water? That that was wet water. <laughs> I thought it was a dry brush stroke. I like that. Can you just keep that wet right there forever? I'd love to. <laughs> fingernail polish. Clear fingernail polish. No, okay, yeah. So I tried you, to keep uh, it looks like a wet. You, you know. Yeah. Now. You could step this into the more of the realistic values or what I would recommend doing, because this is looking so nice as a very high key thing is, uh, just come in with some very pale shadows, very, very light, light kind of pale shadows, ease your way into the shadows. So they're not a big deal, you know, and into the water, very light. Maybe the wrong color, but that's the idea. You know, it's interesting your picture and the and the live thing. <laughs> it's considerably different. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. I, but um, th this is really really nice in in the in the sense that it, it's got it, it's very very light light thing to it. Now, some of the sometimes what I like to do is start the whole painting off like this, and then leave it in the background like this. And then see how you're starting to push these values up here really, really uh, more saturated and darker. Maybe, maybe the way to go is to take, let me get another drawing tool here, to take this tree here and do some of this with it, some of these darker values with it. And the same thing with these guys here. These are just suggestions. You can do whatever you want. Just you, just so long as you do exactly as I say. <laughs> and then uh, what I want. Of course. So seriously, folks. So um, <laughs> if if you wanted to, you could just push these values and ease them up into the foreground like this. I wouldn't really. I don't think I'd go any darker than this. It'd be beautiful, and it already is. It's a great start. Darker than what? I I'm sorry, I missed that. Uh, about about like these values. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, these guys in here. About like these values right there. Yeah. Sometimes it's easier to draw the arrow than it is for me to point. Get an arrow and point it. There's an arrow. Like <laughs> yeah, this yeah. value right there. Yeah. Yeah. That over there and this over there and this over there. Sorry. <laughs> I just love the arrow. I got it. There we go. What it, there it's, we go. What's interesting, Rob, is. Uh, uh, it's about two or three clicks lighter on your screen. 
Oh, it is. Oh, okay. Oh, that's good. Uh, but you took it outside. I can see, huh? Yeah, I had to. That'll definitely lighten it up. Uh, Sometimes, if you can take it by window light, might might be a little bit better. Okay. Like not 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 where the light is coming directly in the window, but like passive window light. You get they call it Nordic light. That's a good way to shoot your stuff too. Should I try to shoot it again and send it to you? Oh, it's okay. Okay. Oh, the the same thing. It's fine. Um, yeah, the same thing is true. It's the same. It's the same things. Maybe your values are a little bit more. But I'm, I'm, I think that your trees up here are still lighter than your bush just down here. Yes, the the, the, rel, the relative num the relative yeah. numbers is, or values is, is still true. Yeah, it's fine. I would. So that's what I would do. I would just increase these guys up into the foreground a little bit more. And if you want to, before you do that, maybe wet wet down the trees before you do that, and then. Hit them a little darker so you get those soft edges still. You know, do them all wet into wet. You could do it. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you. Yeah. So, all right. What about the water? Can you tell me? The water looks great. But of course, as you, as you bring these, as you make all these darker in here, you'll want to take that value darker into here. So as you, if, if you're going to go ahead and make these darker, um, go ahead and, and make the water darker too. So in other words, start the race again. <laughs> yeah. And um, what you could do first before you even, before you, let's say you did the trees and you're getting ready to do the water. Maybe put down some water on the water. Oh gosh, sorry. Um, that was all. <laughs> Let's say, put down some water first, and then come back and put down like your tree color over that, and you'll get really soft edges that way. So it's like you're doing a wet into wet over a dry wet into wet painting. <laughs> uh, okay. Sounds like that fun. Make any sense? Just, just wet it first and then throw in your values. You'll get softer edges. Mm -hmm. It's pretty. All right. Pretty nice. So uh, we've got uh, Ethel. Uh oh. Ooh. Hey. Hey, it looks good. Oh, you, <laughs> you did the rocks. It looks bad, yeah. <laughs> I know. I, 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 I think I remember you painting those rocks. You know the big, the big sculpturesque one. Yeah. Yeah, I think I remember that one. All well, right. Yesterday, I drew it yesterday with the rocks, and I thought I like this one. I'm going with that. Yeah. So. Okay. I tried the thumbnails of the others, and it didn't look. wasn't as fun. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know what? One thing I do right off the bat here is, uh, you see how this line right here goes uphill? Yep. I might. This one goes uphill too. So ah. I might. Um, I might. Uh, this is better though. You could probably just leave that one. I might level this out a little bit. Maybe add a little bit more there. Okay. Then this one, see how this is going uphill? It, it kind of throws us off a little bit. So what I might do here is uh, flatten these out a little bit more. Oh, okay. Just, just flatten that out a little bit more. And it doesn't, I, I'm making a really dark line here. I would just suggest, like you're doing here, with a little bit of line there, just just flatten that out a little bit. I think, I think it'll... Um, because I noticed the, the, I was getting a feeling that the painting was tipping or tilting down this way a little bit when I looked at it with nothing on it. See how it begins to feel like it's tilting a little bit. So just a couple of level, a couple of little level lines in there, I think would do it. And and not hard lines or anything like that. Just just to play with it and see what you think. Um, the water right here. This is awesome. Mm -hmm. Nice. Awesome. Beautiful. Beautiful. Water. Very nice. And you know, your blue shadow in here, that's such a nice choice of color right there. 
so you could have used gray in there, but you chose to use a blue. I think that's just, it's such a better color. I think it's just a really nice way to go in color. I mean, it's easy to go with black. Black's easy. It's it's always there, and we can all use it. But uh, remember, you can always use almost you can use any color you like, as long as the value is right. You can use uh, a reddish color, like you got reddish in here. I see it, and you got uh, small. You try that. You got reddish. Yeah, there. I got little baby arrows now. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> Red. Red is, new. is that too small? Uh, I'll put it here. Yeah, too cute. How about we go red? Here. There we go. You got red. A redder shadow, a bluer shadow. I like that. You got a greener shadow there. It's just so much better than just gray. Now, you have plenty of gray in this piece. Yeah. You don't need any more. Yeah. In fact, what I, could, what I would suggest is possibly take take some um, saturation in, in some areas little little areas and just hit a little yellow maybe not this far away I think this is probably too far away to do it but maybe some yellows and greens and orangey things mm -hmm. up in the foreground just a little bit a little bit here and there mm -hmm. Of course, down into the water. If you do, anything you put up down here, make sure you get a little bit into the water. So. Just to and 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 leave it back here. Well, I wouldn't touch anything back there. Just a little more saturation up into the foreground will do it. Now, you guys, um, what she's doing here with these really dark little pockets. Those can be really cool. That can be a really neat little stylistic move uh, with these little pockets. So they're, they're a little overstated. Yeah, uh, just slightly. But, <laughs> but, but, but as a stylistic move, you, you could do that. I mean, I, I would think about possibly doing that stylistic move all over the place. It really does. It starts... Um, um, there's a little kinship there with uh, Chinese painting when you start making moves like that. Just like you did up here in the foreground. These are little, see these little pockets you got there? I would think of them, you know, it could be a nice little stylistic move. Yeah. Maybe this tree feels a little unfinished. Yeah. All this edge. Yeah. Maybe some shading around here, along the edge here, possibly. Maybe a little edge work on your trees, whatever. I'll leave it up to you. You've done enough of these things. <laughs> One thing with uh, grasses, though, like this, see? I try not to get them to end in the same place. See how they kind of fit into like a, you know, a shape like that? Try to, try to pull a few out every once in a while. Ins and outs, you know, here and there. You know, a little little crossover once in a while you know it's really easy little things like that but you know we're finishing the painting and those little things show in the end so cool I, I also would think about possibly throwing a little shadow here on the ground yeah yeah okay cool. all right thank you peace nice looking piece okay very nice All right, we've got uh, George. All right, pops. That's got a lot, a lot of saturation and a lot of pop. Nice. Uh, thank you. Okay. You know, uh, as much edge work as you want, is it's up to you. However much edge work you want, I think that the. Um, that these darks are a little drastic. Yeah. So what I what I would do is maybe take a little water and lighten them up and and, and um, that's a little too much. But 
but just I would just lighten these up a little bit, and I probably lighten these up a little bit too. Yeah. Yeah. Here and there, think about that. Also, your white right here in the background. Um, I would uh, soften the edges a little bit more. Okay. Just just use a little bit of water. Try not to get too much water on there. I just use a damp brush. All right. Just to play around with it. Yeah. Um, what else? I might cast a little bit of a shadow over the bridge. Sort of. Now, since you have blue behind it, I might use something uh, a little more like lavender, like a like a violet or something over there. You know, so maybe not that far over, but well, the, that that's supposed to be a shadow. At the, the... That's a shadow. No, oh. uh, here. Uh, where where you were putting the purple? Yeah. Yeah, right there. That's shadow. Supposedly, yeah, it got lighter. Yeah, I just I, I put it down a little bit, you know, quite quite a bit. Uh, you want to you want some separation there? Oh, that right there, this thing right here, shadow. Okay. Yeah. I guess because I think it would possibly be a little bit bluer. Okay. Maybe, maybe. I might just make it a little bit bluer. Okay. It looked me because it's so similar to the color of the the. Um, the bush next to it, I was thinking it was more like the bush. That's yeah. I mean. It's a little bit more like that. Kind of grouped into there. And what I was thinking is that if, if it is, just keep it as a bush. And then tag a little bit of, um, tag a little bit of shadow in there. Let me, I'll use it with lavender here. Yeah, tag a little shadow in there or something. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. If you like. All right, I could make it look more like shadow. Yeah. Then I would think about, see, we have a really sort of uh, contained edge here. So, again, uh, I would give it a little ins and outs, you know, think, think about think about that. Okay. Uh -huh. Now, the value of the tree right here is really similar it's not really separating from a lot of these values back there. So I could see it going about maybe to this value here, a little darker. Okay. And now, now that would give you a little separation between the tree and what's behind it. That's all I'm, I'm looking for. And if you feel like giving it a little scruffy, scruffy work around the outside, that's totally up to you. But, um, um, and then it's, I don't know if you care about putting in any white rocks, but you certainly could do that. Mm -hmm. And if you do, make sure you put them in the water, put little reflections in there. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Very nice. Oh, thank you. I like it. Okay. That was loud. Okay. <laughs> Henry. Oh, on that side. I'm At least we got it here. Here. <laughs> yeah. Did you get my Fusumi uh, painting as well? Is Just, it on there too? Did you get the one with the three pictures? Or, I mean, oh, I sent oh, you three. Let me see. Oh, okay. That was your old one. Okay. All right. Since I'm. All right. I'll, I'll jump forward. It's still sideways. Uh, that's the Sumi one. Yeah, this is the uh, the artist the one. Yeah, these two are the same. Okay. And that's still on rice paper. Yeah, that's on rice paper. Um, I was uh, wasn't finished, but um, I have that's kept doing beautiful. it uh, during your critique. So now it's uh, mm. more more um, dark. So I added. Um, yeah, so you got a lot of really nice light, Beautiful. light values. So that's, that's what this paper will naturally do for you because it doesn't have a lot of sizing in it, right? Um, it's the same it? size. Yeah. It's absorbent. Yeah. So very absorbent. Okay. Yeah. Very, very absorbent. 
So, but you can do some dry brushing on it. I see you doing some dry brushing right yeah, there. Yeah, I, I did so some, I but uh, I don't more, know how right? to show you, but uh, let me see if I can show you guys. Uh, this is, would be the back. Anyway, it's hard to show on my, uh, uh, just, okay. yeah. Anyway, so I'm thinking a little bit more dry brushing, like for some edges around here, around mm -hmm. a little more ins and outs. You see how it kind of falls into just one big shape? So yeah. I would just, you know, just dry brush a little bit more in and out there. This right here is gorgeous. Look at this. This tree is, that's really masterful, you guys. And the reason why is because look how he just did it in one big swoosh. You can tell he just kind of rolled his brush around mm, and swooshed yeah. it. That's, and he got a, he got a, a good Beautiful. shape and value and edge color all in one stroke yeah. Gosh. That, that it's master it becomes masterful when um when you're doing more things with one stroke than you ever thought before you know they'll they'll come a day when you're doing two and three and four things with the stroke it's really fun mm -hmm. you know this almost looks like a stamp in a way because it's just been because of its freshness, see how fresh that is? It almost looks like he, like he has a, like he has a redwood stamp in the back, and he just stamped it on there. You have one, don't you? Don't you, Henry? You have a redwood stamp. Oh, he does. Blue Heron Arts, <laughs> redwood stamp. <laughs> Good one. Yeah. All right. Uh, by the way, this this little blue right here, this is a nice, see, see these little, this is what you call an accent right here. Yeah. Um, there's no reason to do those except for the, the feeling of the artist, that the artist feels that there needs to be something there, because it's not actually there. You put it in there and it, and it just works and you leave it. Um, that's that's why you do those things. It's in the tree. He has the blue in the tree. Yeah, I had the shadow on the bridge now. Um, just uh, as we speak, so that Pretty. that would be a yeah, just a reflection of that. that. Right here? Yeah, yeah, right. I did that. Yeah. Uh, okay. I see. So there's reason behind it, but I thought you just threw them down there because they look good. Uh, yeah. In, it? it's, in, initially, I didn't think about where it comes from. Yeah, I I just threw okay. some raw uh, primary colors, uh, let it blend on the paper. So. Wow. I was gonna, you know, I was gonna give you credit for just throwing in these blues because you felt like it and everything, but now you <laughs> take it back. It is. <laughs> it's not, it's not as, it's not all that masterful. Then I'm sorry. <laughs> oh. Sorry. Uh, sorry, you'll get it next time, man. <laughs> thank no, you. Henry's uh, amazing with the, with this this technique, you guys. Beautiful. If you ever want to try this rice paper, you should try it. It, it I, I tried it. It, it's not easy. It is not easy, but you get the feel of it after a while. And it, but it, it takes a beating. This stuff, you can beat this paper up. You, you, you think it's really uh, sensitive, and it's not. No, no. All right. Yeah, just a. I mean, all I could think of here is just a few edges. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I could see a little bit of a shadow, a little bit more shadow here on the bridge, possibly. Yeah. If, I already if you think, liked. Yeah. Um, that's about it. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, oh, thank you. All right. Uh, we've got, let me go back down to Misha. Misha. Wow. Abstract. Mm. Wow. That's fun. I love it. Yeah. Instantly, what I like oh, about okay. this is, I would all this almost fits under the category of um, representational abstraction. Yeah. Almost. Wow. There's there's a lot of representation here. So I, I mean, uh, by the way, just so you know, just so you know, my my favorite stroke in your whole piece is right here. <laughs> all that stuff. That is beautiful. <laughs> So again, you guys. I was, it's, was mad. So <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say this shows a lot of emotion. So, so my point was, is if my mute wasn't on, I'm sorry. Oh, 
<laughs> it looks it looks to me like like you're putting it down um with the passion <laughs> the passion i don't see mad i see passion okay you know i i just i think your water just rocks that is that is really groovy water feels watery i love this stroke right here it just goes all the way down love that now that's something you can do you guys what happens is you, you put this stroke down first let it dry and then you come back over it with that white and it makes it feel waterish because there's something on top of it a little overlapping so i painted this vertical so that the paint was running from the top to the bottom Did you do that out of frustration too? You see all, you know, you see all these different approaches. I mean, everybody's doing the same thing in a totally different way. In fairness, this isn't as in my my actual piece is not as saturated. I don't know if you guys can see that. Yeah, I know. It, it it kills everything. My piece, you know, you guys couldn't see it because you're just looking at it over Zoom, but my piece is actually a total masterpiece. It is so great. It's so. <laughs> I know, I know. I yeah, it, it's a lot more saturated. You know? I'd, I'd love to. Maybe you could take a photo of it and, um, well, I don't know. The photos never do it justice, huh? It, it's, it's different. I tried coming it down in Photoshop, but that didn't work very well because it lost a lot of other stuff. So Ooh. it's not nearly that orange. The purple on the left is similar. The blues are a little bluer um, in, you know, it's not that. It's not that bright, but maybe I should go there, right? Maybe I should make it. There. Yeah. You guys look look how she's scribing, she's scribing back into it right here. See? And then if you look at her, uh, her, uh, she's got, she's, are you using a, like a Sharpie pen or something? Yeah, ballpoint. I don't, yeah. no, it's just, I'm not happy with them until I start pushing that back. I, I just am not. You know, so that makes me happier. Yeah. Well, that's good. I, you seem I, like you had a, a lot of emotions in this piece. Yeah, I would title it Fire in the Distance. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it does look a little bit like someone's hair now that I think about it. Good. <laughs> I, I thought it looked more like, like an eye. Uh. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. <laughs> I want to do that to you. Yeah, you do. <laughs> no. I only do that on, uh, because I, I know you're used to my jokes. <laughs> I don't make vicious jokes. You don't. No. But, uh,. No, I like this piece. It's really got a lot of, uh, abs you know, I love, I love it when artists work the abstraction in it. That's really where we want to go. That's where all the fun is. That's that's where the uh, the medium does as much of the work as you do, and you just act as an art director. Like I would say, if I had to critique my own piece, I'm looking at here, it's a little overly art directed. You know, it's a little um, picky, and that's because I'm, you know, I'm demoing. Maybe I need to do on my demos. Maybe I need to just let it all hang out. Well, and I think that's what I 
like I said, I had done one other piece and I didn't like it. It was just like, okay, I'm just too something. I don't know what I was. So that's like, okay, whatever. Too tight. Too, too tight, but you know, my work is never tight. I mean, you can't describe me as tight, but it was certainly too tight. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you, Rob. Thank you. That's a nice piece. Thanks. Okay, we've got uh, Hector. Ooh. 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 Hector. I like the art. Wow. Yeah. I know oh, the I other it. day, Hector. Hector, I know the other day you were working. Um, you were you were not putting in the darks on purpose. Now you are. I'm back. <laughs> you're you're <Yeah>. back, huh? <laughs> that, you you just had a you had a you you well you know you, you got to experiment. It's the well, thing. Yeah, I was experimenting. I was trying to. I I I'm still working on it. Yeah. Not being not using the dark so much, but here I had to hurry up and finish. Yeah. Because I do, I watch, I watch, I watch your demo, and I only have them less than an hour. Yeah, but don't you usually do them in five minutes? <laughs> <laughs> Thirty-five. Oh, okay. I, I've I've watched you work before, and then I turn around and, and the thing, I'm like, what did he do? I mean, I'm, five minutes ago it looked like this, now it looks like that. All right. Well, anyway, I, I like the line work. Nice to see you back. No. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. I love. I love. This is what I think of when I think of Hector. All this stuff like this. Just, just the. And I could even see more if, if you like. But I mean, I could see even more. You know, of the way you. Here comes another word. Calligraphic eyes. <laughs> Calligraphy, calligraphy, calligraphize, calligraphize, calligraphize. That's a word. Or use calligraphy. <laughs> that wouldn't be as fun. I like the Ross term. Calligraph, calligraphize it. By the way, I, I love. Look at this area in the background. See the you got the redder, the bluer, and the yellower in a color field. Nice. Oh, yeah. Huh. All right. Well, that's about all I could say is, you know, possibly more definition. But as I've said before, the more stylized you get, the harder it is for me to critique. Most, most of the time, I would say, um, um, as far as stylization, I would take your stylization, which is mostly found in the way you calligraphize, you come back in and define things with line. You know? Mm -hmm. So, I'm, I'm catching on to your groove right here now. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> You're giving me an art lesson. Thank you. How much do you charge per hour? Just joking. Um, all right, yeah, just a little bit more definition in your line around things. I, on the other hand, right, that might take away from this, huh? I don't know. I, I said two. Oh, you did? Yeah, because I, I, I went back and I uh, took a damp brush to make the bridge a little bit lighter. Oh. Because the, from the photo, I was getting the photo from the photo, I tried to, uh, it, the bridge looks pretty, uh, you know, not lit up at all. Yeah, I, I, I'm looking at your other one here. Yeah, just like, the, maybe that's the one, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, th this one has a little bit more saturation. Looks like you came in with some of these yellows in there. That was a good move. All right. No, all I did was just lighten the bridge, the second one. Oh, you did? Just oh. the photo, yeah. Oh, it might be the photo. Okay. Well, yeah, that's. Yeah, that's. That's all right. That's all right. Oh, Hector. Okay. All right. 
Thank you. It's going to Marilyn. Hey, Lynn. Hey, I you sent me three? I know. I kept painting. The last one is, oh. is the... Oh, you did? Last, <laughs> I still kept painting. I'm still going. <laughs> okay. They never... They, they're, well, they say they're never finished. They're just abandoned. Beautiful, then. That's gorgeous. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Oh, wow. Yeah, that is nice. nice. So right away, um, I love this blue edge right here. This blue edge right here is really nice. It's such a, it's such a, um, a nicer color than if you were to use a dark green. It's just so you're just taking the green and emphasizing the blue, and then you're getting. Uh, a, a better color in my opinion yeah, now here's one one issue okay um, can you see how let me take a straight line here can you see how we're getting almost a straight line through here oh yeah yeah so no big deal I would just take I would just take a little bit of this edge and pull it over a little bit more a little, little bit more, like that. Maybe a little bit in here too. Just, just randomize that. I think it'd be fine. Maybe even a little bit over there. Yeah, something like that. So it doesn't. So it doesn't fall into a line. Sometimes those, those can really. Sometimes they're just fine, but sometimes they can really uh, create an alignment where you don't want one. So. Um, in fact, I could see these these trees maybe coming up a little bit higher. And the reason why is because because the top of the mountain is starting to come in with the top of the tree there too. So all I'm thinking is pretty easy solve. Just take a little bit of that up into there, a little bit of that up, you know, something like that. And that really that really pushes the trees in front of those two forms. Okay. I could also see. A uh, little more shadow on the ground here. Okay. Oh, yeah. Just something down there just to sit them down. That's all. <laughs> Easy breezing. And um, I could also see uh, the shadow here being just a little bit darker. Just a little, a little more distinct. Maybe possibly that would, I wouldn't use gray, but maybe this would work better. Something like that. Yeah. So, and that's not the, the nicest color, by the way, but whatever. That's the right, that's the right value. Um, I want to just make a quick statement. Your tree, your, um, this is beautiful. This is a beautiful tree. Um, mm -hmm. It really Very is. Very nice. You've got everything going. The one thing I hate, to, I know I'm being Mr. Picky here, I know, but um, one thing I would do is maybe take a little bit out of the piece. Just take it clearly out. Clearly out of the piece. See how, because it's ending right at the frame. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. just, just take it out. <clears throat> Your colors and values are just beautiful, beautiful. I could see some of these colors and values a, a little more, a little darker in the water. Maybe not quite as dark as the tree is, but a little bit darker, I think. And in here too, a little bit greener, a little bit darker in there, etc. Um. See the way you did the water right here, this area? You just did that in one big wash and a couple dabs and you're out of there. I love that kind of thing, so. The more of that, the better. The more of that quick in and out stuff, you know? Just, and, and the way you handle, the way you handle this tree mass is really great. Um, because you have, you can see the mass of it, and then you went and punched a little yellow over there. Oh, I'll get it. You smack the yellow over there, 
and then you smack the blue over here. It really feels like light and shadow. And it, it, not only that, but it, it uh, has a lot of um, a lot of guts. You know, you don't get the glory unless you got the guts. You got to take those. You got to take. You got to make those gutsy moves. Those are glory moves. So now, by the way, I would take I would take this blue shadow into your water a little bit, okay? And maybe a little bit of this yellow into the water too. That's all. Have I totally destroyed your piece? <laughs> no, Rob. I always like it with your markup best. Thank you. <laughs> I would now, take the markup. Now, just remember, you do have the bridge sort of in the center. Um, kind of centralized. Um, I will have to say, it, it didn't bother me that much. But if I wanted to improve the composition, I might have moved this, this maybe over here, maybe over here a little bit more. I wouldn't do it now. But so you so you get a little bit more of a juxtaposition between these two points, the point here and this here. Absolutely, you're right. <laughs> yeah, just a little bit. I don't really see how you could do too much to change that now, and 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 it's not bad. It's it's really not bad at all. Um, but just, just as a pointer on the next one, a little more juxtaposition in ace, uh, of asymmetrical forms. So, so take that and move it way over, way over. So you get, get that asymmetry. Okay. I have a question, Rob, on the yeah. water. Would you, do you wet that area first and then put the colors in? I is would do that? that. Yes, I would. Yes, I would. Okay. Yeah. And when you wet it, don't go over it too many. Don't go over it too many times because if you do, it'll uh, it'll start picking up the color underneath it. Okay, thanks. Yeah. One time and then lay down your colors and get out. You know? Boo boo. Okay. Uh, thank you. Sure, I'm coming back to. Oh. Robin, do we do? Do we know? There's your Robin. Robin. Okay. Mm -hmm. Ooh, I like the soft. Very soft. Very wet and wet. Well, you do this a lot. Very soft. So she's the uh, she's experienced <laughs> in the wet and wetization. <laughs> I will say that um, remember the areas of hardest edges will attract the eye. Yeah. So this this. Um, edge right here I would soften I would soften that and I, I might put something a little bit darker under there Just, somebody's I can hear somebody's siren um, so yeah I would soften this edge and and then put a little bit and, and lighten that edge too soften it and possibly lighten it a little bit and then a little more emphasis here. I, I love the way you handled the, the reflection. In the, that's a beautiful reflection of that in the water. Just, you know, just do a little bit more softening of that. Um, now these little marks in the water like this, you feel a little fragmented. What I would do is take a dry brush and I don't. I wish I had a dry brush mark on here, but um, take a dry brush, just over them, and then maybe maybe in this green color here, just just take a little bit of a dry brush through it, and you know that white I told you to, maybe maybe take a little bit of that white over things as well, because these little they look like little um, little they look like little cuts. These over here don't look so bad because they're not as drastic in value. These dark, these dark ones over here, they look like little cuts. And so no big deal, just bring them together. 
but we're getting into that scattered thing again. And so we bring them together. We need something to bring them together. So a couple of those white marks and a couple of dark, not really dark, you know, I just mean like about the same value as this right here, dry brush marks through there, I think would bring them together. Um, I really love this area right here. This little way you handled all that. I really like that. Something very uh, absolute and concrete about that. Just you got in, you got out with the values and colors and the edges. They're not mushy. And some mushy edges in your water works really well, but in the real life stuff, I might come back and crisp off a few edges, like maybe in here. And you, you know, you could do that. What was that? I thought you had a question. Oh. You could do that with a um, with a little background, with a little bit of background. You can kind of cut back into it and get a nice harder edge too. Not that dark of a value, but just remember, you don't always have to get, you don't always have to take the positive to get the edge. You can also take the background in it and cut into something to get an edge. I call that a negative edge. All right. All right, any, any questions? That's beautiful color. Yeah, yellow is very, uh, very nice. Yeah, the yellow, yeah. Yellow, yeah. I, I could even see a little bit more of that yellow down here in the water, possibly. Just as an idea. All right. Very nice. Here we go. Let's see. Uh, we've got Marilyn. Thanks, Bob. Um, sure. Uh, is it way up here? Oh, I don't know. Uh, I don't see yours, Mitsuko. Where is yours? I sent. I sent it to you. Oh. Oh, here. I, I think it's up. Up, 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 up. Oh, there you are. I must have skipped you. Sorry. <laughs> oh, there you go. Uh, is that what kind of paper you on? <laughs> Again, it's mineral. She's working on this mineral paper, you guys. Yes. Uh, do you do your line work first, or do you do, do you lay down your no, tone? Line paper? work was just uh, last uh, one second. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> did, did you do it first or last? Last. Oh, okay. Last one second. <laughs> Now, does, does some of it leak out into the paint? A little bit, huh? Um, I, I no, the last one, that, that's a pastel. Oh, okay. The line work is pastel. Oh, very nice. So a very organic line. Yeah. Very organic. Look at her lines are almost as organic as the water. How about that, huh? Her lines, her lines are almost as organic as the water, you know? Okay. I could see, I mean, yeah. I could see some of these values, these darker values in the water. And I yeah. know, I know, I know that, that paint dries weird, so. It used to have, but then <laughs> when oh, yeah? it, this mineral, mineral paper, it just flows and goes different places. So um, sometimes you never know what you get at the end. Hey. Oh, it's kind of a surprise, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I love, look at this big, look at this big wash. This is just look like, like one big oozy wash right in there and here too very 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 organic okay it's me or can everybody else see what rob's talking about because i can't find in my lost him oh can you guys see yes i can see yes i can see yes, yes. you have yeah, these video pins for show well you know i i I see Rob share, but I think it's stuck for me. It's probably just my feet. Oh. 
Yeah, I notice uh, your voice comes in kind of break, broken up, too. Yeah, it's probably just bad connection. Thank you very much, CenturyLink. All right. Um, yeah, that's about all I can see is just some more values in the water. And I know that, uh, that this stuff is – it's not the easiest stuff to work with. Hey, is it is it easy to pick things up with a uh, – when you use a towel or something? When you, yes. When you want to lift, yes, exactly. To towel, towel works very, <clears throat> towel or anything to lift up. Yeah. Very easy. Oh, nice. Yeah. <clears throat> but, I need to get uh, some of that. I, in here, I think I, I have a lot of indecisiveness because I don't know which direction I, I would go. <clears throat> well, That's why it's kind of indecisive. <laughs> Is that why you came back with the line? Just, just to see right. Else out? I got frustrated. Yeah. I wanted to make it more abstract. <laughs> well, I, you know, I can. I remember a time. This is this is. I was painting out in Malibu. This is in the early '90s. And I was just sort of learning watercolor. Um, and and uh, a mist came along, and it misted. I got like drizzle all over my page and I couldn't get in. And then anyway, it turned all mushy on me. And, and it really, really kind of made me a little angry. So uh, I went back to my car and I still wanted to work on it. And I went back into it with line and drew back into it. And it really helped. I mean, I really liked the way it looked afterwards. So the drawing back into things is a great way to, great way to save a piece. Now, I would suggest drawing into it with different colors, like different color lines. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But as I, I, as I said, I really did in the last one second, so I didn't yeah. change the color. Yeah. So that, that's what I would do is... Uh, yeah, red would be nice. Yeah. Red, yeah. because you have all of this green. Yeah. Maybe some, some red yeah, would be... there's no red in here, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Need some, maybe even some orange or something too. Yeah. Or brown. Brown. You have you have some brown in there. How about some? Uh -huh. That's too red, but well, <laughs> here and there. Yeah, and I really like these mountains. Wow, that feels so. That's that's more like a European mountains, <laughs> like Mont Blanc or something. <laughs> Yeah, like a Matterhorn in there, huh? It's not. It's not the California um, mountain. So. Well, you know, if you ever look at Mount Whitney or something, you might go on that side. Oh. It, those can get pretty crazy. Okay. Yes, actually, actually, yeah. I want a mountain to be the focus. I didn't want like a bridge to be focused. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Well, if if you want that to be more of a focus, then I would I would probably put a little bit more contrast into it. Yeah. You don't have to use a red line, <laughs> but that would definitely do it. Just go like this. You'll get all kinds of focus right there. You know? <laughs> See why you take my class? <laughs> no. Um, yeah, I, I might put a little more contrast into it then. Okay. Yeah. I mean, in other words, I think I would probably come into it with um, some blue. Mm -hmm. It's a little, little more contrast. Yes. Possibly. Oh my God. And maybe even bring it out back here. Mm -hmm. Maybe even in here. So it feels like it's really behind things. Yeah. Yeah. That. <clears throat> yeah. Oh yeah, that's much better. With. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Is that it? Any more questions? Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Is that it? Okay. Yeah, that was good. Yeah. Got everybody, right? Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Bob. Oh, thank, thank you, Ron. Ron. Bye, thank everybody. You, bye, bye. bye. See you next week. Bye. Okay, you guys. bye. Thank you. <laughs> bye. Bye. All right. Bye. <laughs> all righty. We'll see you all next week. I'll try to bye, come up with a creative plan here. Okay. Where are we looking here? How do I do this? Oh, there it is. Okay.
Thanks for watching on YouTube. So next time we'll see you the same time on Wednesday.